Welcome to our 35,000 day hardcore world tour. We just recently had 35,000 days. And we are currently just sitting underneath a whole year of playtime with no AFK. So, I hope you guys are ready for the world tours. We're going to start over here with the Maw Boss, part of the Skulk Lands. This is a, a big project that we got going on here. This was focused around getting a bunch of the mobs inside of the castle that we could possibly get in here. So we have the Elder Dragon here that died and created all the Skulk that you guys see here. All this Skulk will be uh, as far as the eye can see over here, except for over there. We have a different idea for over there. But this Skulk will spread throughout our lands. We'll call it the Skulk Lands. Supposed to be like more of like an acid pool kind of deal. We have our Ravagers over here. And the entrance to the castle. So we'll go through the main entrance here. This is where I have my Skelly Horses as well. We have our blazes at the very front of our entrance here before we walk into our castle. They're all held in place using minecarts and glass panes inside of their head. And then up here, we also have a elder guardian. Right there. And you could probably hear that, but we also have ourselves a Warden up in that tower over there. So we got the Warden, the Elder Guardian, the Blazes so far with our Ravagers and stuff. But this entire castle actually has an interior to it. So let's head on in here. We got the Beacons with a little bit of a symbolic Warden door here. We got this guy right here. I think he's a... No, he's a righty. And he's got the two dogs to help keep him in place. But this is the inside of the castle here. We got a few more mobs. This guy's actually from two and a half, maybe three years ago. From our very first Halloween. He actually survived the great uh, Netherhub bombing. We have murals in here as well. So it's be symbolic of the warden having a little family looking up at the uh, the skies with like wandering traders and stuff like that. We get our micro blocks through wandering traders. I actually buy them using our emeralds and all that kind of stuff. So I could maybe show you guys that later if we see a wandering trader in our travels. But it's supposed to give off a story that the warden is not actually a bad guy. And that it's just sworn to protect the underworld basically. Got a bunch of guys in here. I'm sure you guys can hear them. We have an apple tree right here. This is supposed to be a little bit more special for Blitz because, you know, if you know Blitz, he's all about the apple trees. It's something that we have in our Discord. We got ourselves the sad panda and all that kind of stuff. So we built a little bit of a tree and you can probably see, but we also have shulkers in here. This is supposed to be our end. Let's be symbolic of the end. And then we have all of our shulkers in here. We just started duplicating them, trying to get as many as we possibly could. Uh, and I think over here, we also have this guy. So there's going to be a lot more mobs added to this castle in the future. Especially with, like, the armadillos and stuff like that coming into the game. But it just takes a long time to move mobs. So this is, like, kind of the, their designated area. Over here, we have me, Blitz, and Zopa. Well, Blitz sits on his throne as the mob boss wearing a tux. We got uh, Zopa over here with his nunchucks. And then we got me. Obviously, this is where I get my name from. And I got an arrow in my eye, so that's chill. Uh, we got railed over here. This is supposed to be the mural of the Bastions with the Basalt Delta and the Nether with our Zoglins. And then we got this library over here. It's supposed to be like a beastery where we're essentially just hanging out, writing in her book, studying uh, different mobs inside the game and stuff like that, so... We got this whole thing like covered with like smithing tables, the archways, tons of mangrove with like mud and stuff like that. So it wasn't that cheap. Over here, segue into a different floor. We got our charged creeper with Amanda surrounded by pretty much every single cat in the game. Down here, we got this guy. He's wearing a vex head. I got, I got attacked by an evoker that was spawning nonstop vexes. Survive that. Over here, we have the mob train. So let me show you guys the mob train here real fast. So this is supposed to be a gothic style train. 
that we built that's transporting mobs throughout our world. If I fly over here, we have a witch who conducts this train, and their name is Ozzy. The crazy train. Of course, he hits me with uh, poison. But that is the train. This train is actually going to lead to a couple different areas in the world. And I'll show you guys where that's going to lead here eventually. And it's going to be coming from a different area of the world as well. So I'll show you guys all of that. But within these train carts, we have our sniffers. Our polar bears. People who are working here. Bunch of birds and stuff like that hanging out. We got our all A's. Um, and we got our camels. That's pretty much all the peeps who hang out on our mine cart, uh, on our carts. You'll notice that I lit up this entire area with candles. That was not cheap. But if you look at it from a distance, you won't be able to see any of the candles. So that's kind of like why we decided to go with what we did. Just the fact that I was able to light up all this area without being able to see like a bunch of like spots all over the place. Same thing goes with the roof. We use a bunch of uh, gray candles for the roof to light that up as well. But the roof has got multiple layers to it as well. So we went anvil, wall, fence, and then iron bar. I did my best to go all the way around the castle too just to make sure everything was like decorated all the way around so let me go let me show you guys real quick where the train is coming from and then where it's gonna go so that is the mob boss our most recent ascension completed so this train actually leads straight through the what we call the masa but right like in the future this is all gonna turn to skulk and it's gonna be a dark factory area We'll get rid of our old Mossinator and, and this beacon. And that train will actually connect up over here, which is my spawn chunks, where everything will be steampunk. So I have like this guy right here that's all lined up. We have our steampunk area, which is um, going to go under some renovations, obviously, in the future, because I want to build like an entire steampunk city around this. And then we're going to detail it up as well, so... I have our very first airship we ever made. Let me go to sleep real quick so I can show you guys what that looks like so we're not doing this in the rain. All right. But this is the iron farm looking at it like so. Got uh, the airship over here. Everybody hangs out. Got Luke out here, God hack. The very first time I ever built an airship, but it's actually where I have my portal that leads to my nether hub, which we probably won't go through that uh, that portal, but I'll show you guys what the nether hub looks like because it's one of the biggest projects in this world. So imagine like this entire area surrounded by a steampunk uh, city that leads into a dark factory style over there in the future if we survive long enough. But... This is built for Trevsky. Everything in here is in the spawn chunks. Some things will probably have to move inside of this dome over here. We have ourselves a moss farm. This thing's absolutely nuts. Constantly cranks moss. I have it turned off. Uh, we also breed a bunch of turtles here so I can get scoot. I tried to go with some gears in the floor as well. Kind of inspired by a uh, like a watch. You ever seen like those really fancy watches that have like the nice gears inside the watch? I have a, I have a little bit of a um, smelter area that I've just been stealing all the furnaces from because I never use it. We got a Brock over here. You stuck inside the gears, but this is the interior here. It runs off of Rayworks design. It looks like I actually got myself a trader, so I'll be able to show you guys how I get traders and how I get all these micro blocks and stuff like that. For those of you guys who are probably wondering. But it's a quad. Basically, uh, Rayworks design here. Each one of these gives about 1,200 iron per hour. Or maybe all of them put together is 1,200 iron an hour. I think it's all these together giving me about 1,200 iron per hour. I play for about seven and a half hours a day, so I get about 9,000 iron a day. 
Very, very simple simple uh, design here. And then we got Tresky. He's looking through the telescope of the observatory. We got Maddie over there chilling out. But this is an incredibly simple design. I built one of these in the first, like, couple hundred days. And then I just kind of changed it. Uh, this guy is actually one of the very first mobs I ever got in the game with a pumpkin on its head. Uh, so that's one of our very first glow boys. We have ourselves a honeycomb farm that's completely turned off because I have way too much honeycomb. Uh, over here, we have ourselves the exact same thing, but this one's just for honey. And we also have a shulker. Uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't know that guy was in there. Um, anyways, everything down here is filtered. So we filter out all the poppies. They go inside the garbage, but pretty much just fills up all the iron here. And then I make iron products here and all that jazz. So down here used to actually lead to my nether hub, but that was like way, way before. Actually, I think I actually have a build down here I can show you guys. This is what my iron farm used to look like before I built all of that up there. It used to just go into this room right here. I used to come through this portal. And I this is where I used to keep all my iron right here. And then I would have like a little bit of a bone meal thing. So we've done a little bit of an upgrade since. But I like this room. This room's kind of cool. Never got rid of it. But yeah, once we did like an actual ascension for this build, our ascensions are all of our big builds. So we kind of pace ourselves. We moved everything up and over here. But this is supposed to be like a, uh, a robotics facility. Like they're crafting robots and stuff like that. So we have some robots out on display. Uh, and they're all called like different things. We have Wally, R2 D2, and Wired. We're cranking out suits, like kind of like Iron Man suits. They're supposed to be the manufacturers of the robots that you'll see throughout my world, basically. Sparky and Awkward Tron. And then we got Brad, of course. Sub Brad. And uh, Chad. What's up, Chad? So that is the iron farm. Let me show you guys real quick how I actually get... Um, oh. Uh, let me show you guys how I get uh, micro blocks in the world, basically, because it's not that bad. So what happens is when a wandering trader spawns in this world, I have the ability to do some really cool trades. If I could find him... Hold on. Where is he? They're always in different areas. This guy might have, uh, he might have just died for all I know. But we're looking for llamas. Oh, there he is. Oh my gosh. Okay. I take my emeralds. Find a watering trade and you'll see that he's got a bunch of really cool trades for us. This is added. From a uh, Minecraft head site and all that kind of stuff. So I could buy cool stuff like bone dragons and um, fog dragons. It's the only way I could potentially get these guys like legitimately. Cookie monster, pig. Uh, we got ourselves like monkey captains, Stantler, Waldorf. This all works off of uh, basically what um, Vanilla Tweaks has implemented. It all works off of that basically. So what I do is I just buy stuff um it becomes a little bit of a thing i wasn't expecting to get one during the world tour but it's kind of nice to be able to show you guys like how we do it we got oscar the grouch we got king blazes we got link um i don't even know what this is oh it's an upside down cake heavy ball and it just adds a little bit of decoration throughout our world and kind of makes like the wandering trader a lot more fun um so and then we just put everything back. Looks like we lost a llama, so... I'll, I'll put that in there, too. Okay. Anyways, let's head on over to... Whoops. Let's go over to the uh, the god of agriculture. So, you remember how we had ourselves an apple tree inside of this? I'll show you guys where he got the apple to grow that. But, quickly, before I do that, this was actually the very first village I ever found in, my, uh, in this world. And we just made it into an abandoned village. So this is actually like a real village. Uh, I think I actually have a couple traders who are still kind of stuck here. And of course, uh, that kind of stuff. So if you ever want to watch like my super early on episodes, you can see all that on YouTube. 
we're not even going to talk about that build. We're just going to completely skip over that thing. I'm kidding. We'll probably uh, we'll probably turn around. But we have George over here, which was a mega terraforming project. I don't use any Lightmatica or anything like that. We build everything by hand, freehand, and all that jazz. So this is George's build. He's supposed to be the god of agriculture, and you'll see why I love using the micro block so much. It just adds a little bit more life, you know, like little chickens and stuff like that around the world. Little turkeys, and we got some honey columns with a bunch of bees flying out of it. These are supposed to be called plorks, and we'll get into that here in a bit. They're like um, storks and pelicans if they had a baby. But this was like kind of built off the side of the masa. We just tried to make something like as beautiful as possible. Working on a lot of our um, our cliff sides, making trying to trying to be a little bit better at doing like terraforming and stuff like that. So you'll see that we got even like different colors of water going through here, which is really cool. We actually have a salmon run that goes all the way up the stream, all the way over here, where we got a bear who's teaching one of my ferrets, Zelly, uh, how to fish and eat uh, food and all that kind of stuff. So we got that. So that's pretty cool. Um, we have this guy that goes across here. And then we also have over here. We have this whole area. Yay! This is supposed to be like a ranch where I was keeping all my sniffers originally. But sadly... Uh, they basically all got out. So that's why you see sniffers all over the place. Anyways, they hang out in here. But I was playing around with a lot of, like, gradients and stuff like that. Trying to make it, like, look cool. Make it look like it was, like, lived in and stuff like that. Over here. This is, like, the front view. Try to do, like, a different, like, kind of waterfall throughout here. Like, the split waterfall. We got a wagon that's been like thrown over like on its side. I thought this was really cool. But it is also like our lightning rod conductor. Fountains. We'll make our way up here, but I wanted to go for like kind of like Greek, kind of like rundown. Over here, actually, we have corn. I thought this was really cool. A little corn and stuff like that. Our bridge. That goes all the way through here. Inside of here, I actually plan on doing an ascension. So we'll get into that in a bit. I'm not going to tell you which ascension it's going to be or whose it's going to be or whatever. We have the sniffer egg underneath this little gazebo. But all these plorks actually have pilots. We have Chris over here. She's like one of the, uh, the plork pilots out here. Uh, then we have Jordan over there and Olivia, which you can't see over here. Who's yoinking and stealing all of the um, the hay bales and stuff? Livy Lavender. We have a beautiful view right here where we get to hang out with Freya and look over the world, basically. Up and over here, this is the entrance to George's Ascension. Let's see if I can parkour this first try. Oh snap! I thought I... No, I done did. Anyways, that's how that's supposed to go. We're supposed to fall and fly into here, uh, basically. But this is the interior of George's Ascension, the god of agriculture. That apple tree basically came from this apple right here, this micro block. So that's a little bit of the lore behind that. This seed right here is actually going to have some implications in the future as well. And uh, same thing goes with the mushrooms, the mushroom seeds. We ended up doing like a kind of like um like a really cool like um wall here, and try to like lace out all the walls. They're all different from one another too. We found a full diamond zombie while we were making this build, so we called him Sir George McFancy Pants the Third, and uh, this guy who is supposed to be his squire. But then we got George over here. He hangs out on his throne, vibing. 
with uh, Abby and Geo Mass and his sniffers, Sir Sniffs a lot and uh, Sniffleupagus. So they all hang out here. So that is the God of Agriculture. But like I said, we plan on doing a, like an ascension underneath this ascension, which is like another big build. So we fly in here. Probably not going to see anything because of YouTube, so crank the gamma. But in here, I plan to do a whole build underneath this build, basically. So we can kind of do this whole deal. I've tried to make the beacons, like, invisible and all that jazz. But we'll hollow this out one day, and you can kind of see, like, a lot of my, my walls and my floors that I built up. Just trying to get the shape of this place done. We'll put that back up. All right, we'll go over the, the Masa here in a bit. So that is George, the god of agriculture. We have a city over there, but we're probably not going to make it to the city until a little bit later because there's a couple more builds I would like to go through. But the Masa project is basically turning the Mesa into more of a lush green environment, which is a super big challenge, to be honest. So we have our fishing district with the anchors here that I've been waiting over a year and a half to basically oxidize. But I plan to actually build a bridge here that's going to connect to the city one day. But this is supposed to be focused around, you know, cats and fish and all that stuff. We got ourselves some like little fishing stalls, uh, little fishing houses. Hug boats. That's probably one of my very first boats. Same thing goes with this guy. We have Lapis. We call it Larpis because it's a little bit scuff looking because of the eye. Um, but yeah, that's that's Lapras. Because you can also use Lapras to get around and stuff. Over here in this little waterfall area is actually... This used to be my uh, fire rocket uh, facility that we used to use back in the day. But we don't use that anymore. I used to just like kind of click buttons. And uh, fire... Oh, there he goes. Like that. Just seeing what different fireworks looked like for different celebrations. Way back in the day. Because we used to uh, celebrate all of our um, all of our days over here. We used to watch like the fireworks shows right here. Way back in the day. But everything you guys see around you is actually the Mesa. So, everything... This has all been terraformed. That's my base right there. I know it looks small, but wait. <laughs> uh, it's it's humble. It's We call this the dojo, the build dojo, where I hone my craft to come a, become a better builder. Got herself a little lily pad with a bunch of creepers on it, little moon thingy, mushrooms all over the place. This is my very first blossom tree. Trust me, they get better. Never built a blossom tree. We call it the blobsome tree because it kind of looks like a blob. We got like little like trees like this and you can kind of take in a little bit of the uh, the scenery a little bit. You could see the castles in the background and all this kind of stuff. We got ourselves the llama area. What's up? All the way around here. We're just trying to make it look a little bit more full. It's not done yet. Yeah, it will get better over time. And then just playing around with, like, cool shapes with, like, mushrooms. Over here, I would love to build a lighthouse one day. A little bridge that goes across here with the wheat field that kind of cascades from the uh, from that top portion down to this bottom portion. A little, little house over here that's kind of cute. We have a small little cave over here. Spider spawner. Decided to make this thing look like little something special in here. Little little cave focused around this guy. If I could swim out of here. Let me show you guys the my base before I show you guys around the actual uh, Masa. So this is uh this is the build dojo. Some of these builds were built within like the first like thousand days. So uh, my building has definitely improved since then. This is actually an episode from one of my first, very first episodes showcasing my base over there. This used to be our villager uh, trading hall. Um, I've got some other like farms and stuff like that. 
Our very first build for when the sniffers came out. It's a sniffer farm. Really cool. And then we got the ender dragon. Someone out here slaying the dragon. That's not actually me, but it's pretty cool. I thought it was a really neat pose. But this is, uh, this is it. This is my base. We're pumping in water to bring life into the mesa. It's going underneath some, like, heavy, heavy reconstruction. But uh, we basically have, like, this is outside to the mesa. Down here is where my creeper farm is located. Way down there. One of my first tunnels actually made. Down here is, like, another bridge that leads somewhere else. I'll show you guys that here in a, in a bit. This area is actually very important to me. Uh, and I can't play any of the cool, like, songs that we've got going on because I don't know if I'm going to get copyrighted. But we have some really cool, like, Legend of Zelda songs in here. Uh, but these are the top supporters of the channel. These are people who have helped me uh, basically do what I do every single day. We have our Elytra with our two, like, um, emeralds. We got Dragon and Jimmy, Uni, uh, Herds, Chaos, Kronos. Uh, we got... Um, round and systematically right here these are our, my top two gifters of the month and then they go up onto that board when i'm done and then we got everybody on this side too there's an armor cross i'm swimming i need to go on this side dude uh wicked olivia mono and everything behind them remuse bees prevalency and corin is basically all the badges that they've unlocked gift badges uh, and bit badges and stuff like that. You'll notice that some people have like rainbow badges for like a lot of gifted subs to the channel and then other people have um, like really like a lot of like Pokemon badges. But this is the supporter hall. Behind this door I'm actually going to be using the auto crafter. So we're going to be auto-crafting rockets, uh, auto-crafting TNT, like auto-crafting all kinds of stuff. There's going to be an auto-crafting factory back here for when 1.21 comes out. Soon enough. Down here is my base. So this is like kind of the brain of my world. This is where I do a lot of like my pallets and coming together with ideas guys want to learn how to build this i actually have a tutorial coming up on youtube here very soon teaching you exactly how we uh how we build this thing but we got the fog effects here we've got the silos everything is fully automated it's like 160 no it's like 365 items in this auto sorter all around here uh, we have an overflow. This is where all my boxes go and stuff like that. This is a shulker unloader and all that stuff. So we just throw stuff inside the shulker unloader. And then it filters out throughout the entire system. Uh, we also have shulker loaders down here. Um, and all that jazz. This is an, like an overflow. If I have way too many of like an item and stuff like that, we can just chuck it in here. Um... Yeah, and then we got a couple like really cool mobs. We have another full diamond zombie that we found like over 10,000 blocks away from home. Um, or was it 100,000 blocks? I think he might have been over 100,000 blocks. And uh, you can tell I like to collect mobs. We also have a mod that allows uh, animals to basically stay babies forever. It's made by Round Around. Awesome guy. Uh, we got cats and brown mushrooms. We have guardians. Uh, this is basically the sorter. But there's a lot more that meets the eye. Down here, this is where I hand sort all my items. Things that don't need to be sorted. Right? I'm not going to auto sort enchantment tables or, or anything like that. You know? Or like dyes. I got my snow fox. He's got a little bed. Down here. We have more shulkers on display. Uh, this is a concrete converter. I'll show you what all this black concrete is for in the future. My wolf. Which is, uh, love wolves. Uh, we got charged creepers charging up our beacons. We have ravagers with, um, football crazy out here. 
Uh, and then I got some of the most inspirational people who have also touched the channel and helped the channel in like massive ways. I'm sure you guys recognize them. We got Impulse, Cub, Iscal, Tango, Etho, and Scar, and more throughout the world. But this is basically where I hand sort all my items. So I mentioned earlier we don't use Lymatica uh, or anything like that. Don't even have a creative world to like read, like to design stuff. We do everything like kind of like uh, freehand. So let me show you guys where that all like kind of happens. I built this room over here. This is my uh, this is my warehouse, my testing facility. So this area down here is where I get to basically uh, build stuff. Like this, we got Mandro's mask here in the middle. But this is where I get to like work out like my floors, my walls, all that kind of stuff. We get to like uh, I want to use this room to basically map out all that out. And then one day I'm gonna have all of the uh, my moderators over there, you know, watching and cheering me on. So this is my warehouse that I just added on. It's kind of kind of like a gymnasium, but I actually plan on building like an archway over there so I can go that way. I can go that way, and then I want to go this way as well, and then we'll just kind of expand it out underneath my storage room. Oh, if I can get out of here, I need rockets. But yeah, that's the storage room. And I guess uh, since we're already in the storage room, we'll walk uh, We'll walk down here into the sewer system. There's a lot to kind of take in here. I'm going to work my way over to Broken Hollows. Because it is another one of my most recent ascensions that I want to show you guys. This is the sewer system. This is actually how I used to get around my world. And still how I get around my world is through the sewer system. Uh, we also have a little baby Zoglin here. <laughs> You could probably hear that, but I have another warden. I think we have over 10 wardens in this world that have all been uh, moved. So that is season two Kappa. They hang out and kind of like walk up to them. We've got a little present. You can just kind of chill out and we do this. Stop. Normally says hi back. Anyways, that was one. That was our very first warden ever moved in the world. Very scary. Um, that was not a good time. Over here, we have this guy who's drowning inside the fog. But we also have this. This is our blue axolotl. Don't think I'll ever want to get another one of those guys. This door, or not, not a door, actually comes with a little bit of a melody. That leads to my end and another secret ascension. So we're going to get into that here in a bit, but not yet. I'll work my way back to that. Because that's a really, really cool build when we go into the into our end realm. Our furnace array with over 240 furnaces does the job. Uh, in here, we have another wart farm. Also, well, not really. It doesn't do the job. You know those robots that we saw earlier? Well, they hang out in here. We've got a diamond beacon. This is also where we keep our dragon egg. We have Puff. This is my very first organic ever. <laughs> so this was a struggle. Uh, we got Shadow and all of his uh, his homies. Uh, we got just like loot piles and stuff. This is our bank. This is where we do a lot of our trading in the world, whether it's uh, buying X XP potions, uh, glass. Uh, what else do I do? I trade a lot of iron, buy a lot of quartz, um, buy a lot of leather armor, uh, food, all that stuff. So right now we are currently are at 1.2 million villager trades. Which is quite a bit. You can tell we do a lot of trading. We don't have a raid farm. So all of our emeralds are actually like, um, they're actually gotten just from uh, trading alone. So we're going to head on over to Broken Hollows. This is the outside of the build. Big giant door, hardcore heart. Right back into the Masa, or the Mesa now, because this hasn't been converted at all. But. I'll take you guys into a little bit of a sneak peek of our nether hub that is like undergoing a lot of development right now. So let's go back over to here. We'll backtrack a little bit. 
and I can show you guys one of the tunnels that we have inside of our nether hub. I think we have about 12, 13 different tunnels that lead to like a bunch of different builds. We come through here. Go straight through here and it'll take us right into our iron farm tunnel. Alright. So this is the iron farm tunnel. We got a bunch of broken clocks because clocks don't work. It's supposed to be kind of like steampunk. Uh, and then a bunch of uh, my subscribers who have been uh, subscribed to the channel for over a year now. Got a really cool drill. Uh, little cranes. More robots. Um, all that stuff. You know, we got like little temperature gauges and um, all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to be like very steampunk type deal. This is a little bit of the hub, but don't look at this. Let me try to figure out where the heck I am. So I need to go this way. Don't look at this. I'll show you guys this later. There's a lot to see here. So in the future, I actually do plan on connecting. Just so he doesn't blow up my tunnel. Um, I do plan on right here, connecting this tunnel straight out here. Cause there's a couple builds I need to connect this up to, but this is the broken halls. This one was built for jugs. He is the unicorn God of barbecue. So I actually have a video on the lore behind this build, but this build was heavily inspired by one piece. And I wanted to kind of get better at adding color to the game without overdoing it. If that makes any sense. He's supposed to be a pirate who makes Michelin star meals uh, for pirates, basically. Which is kind of crazy. So, let me go over... Is it bedtime? Can I go to bed? Because, of course, it's raining. It's always raining. Okay. Go to sleep real quick. I'll show you guys this build in, uh, in shaders, too. I should be probably showing you guys all the build with shaders. But if you want to check that out, you can check out my other world tour, which will be a cinematic. But it's a little bit of a heart-shaped island. So if I do this, we can switch John over to shaders. Little bit of a little bit of a flip in. Don't look at the sun. But it looks really nice with shaders. Definitely a gorgeous build. This whole island was basically built. Um, and detailed over time, but we'll turn that off. Okay. One of the cool details that we did in, during this build was we did a bunch of like waterlogged mangrove with like coral fans and stuff, which uh, keeps them alive, which was a really cool way to add and incorporate color. But the main concept on this whole island was to make, to like incorporate some sort of boat into each and every single one of these builds. So. This is our lighthouse, which I don't know if you caught that earlier, but it does actually turn on. And it's supposed to be like kind of thrown together in time. Like people made this place habitable because obviously there's a place to gravitate to, which is that restaurant up here. We have our tavern here. Run by Luscious. A little bit of a tavern if you want to grab yourself a wobbly pop or something. She hangs out over here. Some pathways. A little bit of like houses for people to sleep. We got like boats. This is supposed to be like this staircase on how I get to the upper layer down to my bottom layer here. It's supposed to be like a, just a creative way to do it. That's uh, also supposed to be like a galleon. You'll notice that we also have really cool moss. That's a new vanilla tweak thing. Really cool. Uh, check it out. But we made like these little lily pad bridges. We got like steamboats and huts. So I guess we'll start out the steamboat first. Found this guy too. Thought he was cool. So it's to be an old steamboat. This is our general shop. Called the Broken Drum. Ran by Fantasia. Got a little owl homie hanging out and stuff like that. This is the map of the uh, the world basically. Oh, I don't know what the heck that line is bit weird. Oh, is that because that's facing the wrong way or something? No, I don't really understand that. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be like a general shop. So there's that. 
We have a, another tugboat right here, but that's like the way that I get up to the other layer. It's supposed to be a staircase. Up and over here. I'll show you guys this build next. This is our uh, our fishing shop. So coming around here, if you want to come, like the the whole idea of this whole area is that like fishermen or pirates or some of that come through this like little channel where they can um you know dock their boat and come to the uh, the bait and switch shop run by Hunter, who I forgot to change the head of, so he is going to be uh the bank for this day. Uh, but yeah, if you want to buy yourself some fish, uh, fish and tackle and all that jazz, you can come uh, hang out over here. So, this is supposed to be like a 50s diner kind of deal. Walk the plank diner. Like that. I should have probably lit that up. Anyways, it's run by Scoville. And uh, this guy, I think his name is Merle or something like that. But basically, they run their own diner if you want to have like a burger, a drink, some cake. Whatever it may be, you can kind of hang out here. Got a like, little seating area down out here as well. Try to make it as, as a, immersive as possible. I think over here, we also have like some like little like areas for people to sit and hang out and chill. And Over here as well, we have uh, Brixie. She's just kind of chilling. But for the future of this build, let's go over that here a little bit. I plan to surround the surrounding seas with boats, custom boats for people on the Twitch channel for community members to make like really cool custom boats, kind of like One Piece with really cool Jolly Rogers and stuff like that, making the ocean just like very colorful, like people are gravitating towards the island. And then through here, I have a really cool cave that I want to build one day. This will be a little bit of an expansion on the island, but I thought this was a really cool cave. To make like a little like pirate's cove or something like that in here. Really neat. But it's got multiple ways up. Brought that tugboat I just told you. That has like the bridge coming across here. This is the bakery. I think that hole that we just came out of was this guy right here. Which I didn't mean to fall into. When we come over here, this is the uh this is the bakery here. I think this is called Dave's Dankery or something like that. Hello? Yeah. Run by normal guy. You're going to see that he's a very hard worker around these parts. But this is basically where they make a bunch of sweets, uh, cinnamon buns, cakes. Uh, I think that's supposed to be like brown sugar or something like that. But this is a little bit of a bakery here. All right, if we work our way up here to the Pegasus... This is where things get a little bit more colorful. So we got the unicorn. We have, this is supposed to be like a, a narwhal boat. Narwhal inspired boat. Then the unicorn of the sea. Like a little bit of a flag and people hanging out. Little bit of a storm going on here. Don't mind the, tern, uh, the tornado. The tornado. Uh, we got ourselves the rainbow fog out here. Lighthouse. Like a little bit of a lookout point up here. You can kind of hang out and stuff. But you'll see a lot of like inspiration from different boats in this thing as well. So we'll step foot in here. Out here it's just supposed to be like like little like benches for people to like enjoy like a nice ice cream or nice little like coffee or something like that. But yeah, this is the Pegasus. We have our hostess right here. This is... uh. Lady Kluya. A little bit of a seating area if you need to be weighted with uh, some bread. We have a little Jawa here. Stealing stuff. We'll get into that. A little bit of the lore. You'll see a couple of these guys around the world stealing. And then we have Jugs. Cardsy and Little Man. Doing a little bit of karaoke for the night. Singing. He's the unicorn god of barbecue. Kind of like uh, singing for uh, everybody who's a part of here. A little bit of a railing. Got Sin out here. She's doing a little bit of guard duty and coat star and normal guy yet again. Uh, some nice seating area out here so you can like enjoy the nice view. Come through here and we'll go up to our narwhal, which is run by Abby. 
She's like kind of like a private sh uh, chef. She kind of teaches people how to cook and whatnot. So she'll be up here teaching you how to cook like some nice dishes, whether it's um, sushi or pho. You can have like your own private dinner up here. And then same goes for way up here. Run by Zach. Zach's over here. Wash him some skulk stuff. Because who doesn't? Likes a little bit of, uh, you know, skulk catalyst in their meal. But you have, like, some nice, like, little seating up here as well. And, uh, yeah. We'll go over our nether hub after this. Just because I feel like we're going to be passing through it so much. We might as well talk about it first. But, yeah. Get a little bit of the, the rainbow fog right there as well. So that is Broken Hollows. Probably one of the more challenging of builds because it's really hard to incorporate a lot of smaller builds and making them look really cool. And very hard to balance up all the colors. So let's head on back over towards our nether hub here. Like I said, we still need to connect up the uh, the portal and all that jazz. If you want to know more of the lore here, you can see that on the uh, the YouTube as well. All right, make our way back into here. Try to make it as safe as possible. Hopefully that guy doesn't gank us. These like little like areas, like bird cages or whatever you will. These are all gonna lead to different places of my world with like cool chandeliers. But this is the nether hub. Somebody's angry. One of these guys. I have four wardens in here. In each point, you can see that we're, like, uh, in the process of making, like, everything completely blacked out. Let's look at it from over here. Oh, snap! Alright, anyways. Come from here. You can see that we have a nice chandelier here. It's a focal point. This will all be blacked out over time. Just a lot of, uh, black concrete. With a shrieker right here holding up my portal to my base. Uh, we have the void effects. Uh, these guys don't... They're not going to have toys in the future. I just need to distract them while I do these roofs. We have the ancient debris in the walls. But this shrinker right here... Actually leads into the inside... Of this ascension. So I built this for... Sam. Queen of the Damned. And systematically, King of the Crossroads. Or King of Crossroads. We captured a, an upside down gas right there. So he didn't have like all of his phalanges sticking out. Um, we have uh, hit their guards here. Chilling out. Abby hanging out. A little bit of a skull card. This is supposed to be like a kind of like a tomb. Back here. The contract of life room, basically. We have like this really cool like portal with all the souls seeping out. The contract of life where I got to get uh, more totems in the world. Did I close that other door? Okay, good. We got a bunch of like up upside down mobs too. I think that was funny. Like upside down chicken guy. Look at him go. <laughs> All right, over here, we have a morgue. That is really cool. This is supposed to be on like an embalming table. Little airline bat. We got landing over here. It's supposed to be a uh, a place where they um they um turn you into ash. I forget what it's called. Um, you know, burn you up. But we got like these little like thingies up in here. Little uh Easter eggs in some of these. Cremation area. And of course, some coffee. Little hand washing station if you need to wash your hands and put your little biohazards in there. A little, a little messy in here. A little messy. Come through in here. This is our library. Like, kind of like our dead archives. That guy's been up there for a really long time, actually. Over a year. So we've got like this whole area up in here. Must be like the dead archives. Come through here. 
Uh, this is kind of like our, our dungeon, our prison. So all these guys are uh, lefties, except for this guy. He's a righty. Sucks to suck. I'm, I'm a righty. Just saying. But anyways, that guy's a lefty. Where we just keep a bunch of these guys kind of hanging out. Run, Bob Melly. What's up? And then we have a little bit of a, like a fungin in here. And then I think I've got one more room to look at in here. Where is it? Nope, oh, that was all of the rooms. Okay, that's the, like the interior of this area. All right. So there's a little bit of a concept. It's supposed to be like kind of like life and death. This is supposed to be full hearts. No, that's supposed to be full hearts. And we're supposed to work our way around the hub, like kind of like losing hearts as we go. And then we got a, like a little bit of an upside down heart over there. So let's go to one of our, uh, one of our biggest, our newest expansions, which is over this way. We're going to go over to the islands. So these rooms will all be blacked out. These rooms will have like chandeliers for the future. And I'm going to have like some sections cut out for people. So we're going to go into the Alice in Wonderland area of the world. So I built this one up for Bunny Girl next door. You'll see her quite a bitch. One of my mods. Two charged creepers hanging out. We use like the uh, the cake to uh, make this place spawn proof with like carpets and lighting and all that kind of stuff. But there's, a, there's actually quite a bit through this portal over here. So we go all the way down here. Got a zombie guy over here. So this whole island was inspired by Alice in Wonderland. So you're immediately met with a uh, the Mad Hatter's uh, hat on a rabbit with uh, Mrs. Potts. Uh, we got Chip from Beauty and the Beast. Um, pocket Watch. And this is supposed to be a cake right here. But in here, this is like our portal area. We actually have some phantoms over here. Which totally didn't get that phantom membrane from. Don't know where that heck that came from. Yeah, this is uh, Alice in Wonderland's Island. We got the Cheshire Cat up in here. We got the gas. Um, got some coffee shops area. What do we call this? The Jitters. Got those guys hanging out. Uh, ice cream shop. Oh, so hopefully we don't look at this guy. Run by a, uh, I don't know what what happened in here. I don't know how all these animals got in here. We only started off with uh, Am and Sanda running the ice cream place, self-serve. Mm -hmm. And then we have like a little donut shop over here run by Round. We got like these guys hanging out. I keep my goats in here. Little map of the island. I don't know what's going on with the maps here, but... This is the map of the island. You can see that it's actually heart-shaped. This is naturally generated Mushroom Island, which I thought was an incredible. Over here, we have a casino. Little casino with a bunch of uh, shulkers and stuff like that hanging out. Mm -hmm. With a bunch of broken textured uh, paintings. Uh, but this is where you can play pool, you can throw darts, uh, play poker, uh, gamble on those machines, have a nice drink over here uh, with that guy who will throw forks at your face if it's nighttime. He doesn't like overtime. Um, but anyways, come over here. We have like a nice like musical path and all that jazz. We made ourselves a giant chessboard, just like kind of like Alice in Wonderland, where you have like all your pawns, your kings and all that kind of stuff. Hanging out here. These these things are super, super flipping cute. They were made by iPhelps. You guys don't know who iPhelps is? Check him out. He's awesome. He made all these really cute, like, uh, little statues. I think they're adorable. So we added them to our world. Um, good old iPhelps. Yeah. Amazing. Thought they were so adorable. So, yeah, we got, like, different biomes and such. Uh, we got a little uh, little snowball fight happening in here. Uh, we have a little fog effect right here around the cake. 
magenta, and cyan. These little crabs were cute. I think these guys are adorable with their little eyeballs and stuff. This guy, this actually is very, very special to us. So, like, this guy actually has a small little turtle named Carl. And he lives here. And this is like a microbiome. Where he's got his own, like, little, like, water and his little mushrooms and little trees and stuff like that. But that's our boy, Carl. He's amazing. Oh, that looks amazing with the boss. Uh, little games so you can, like, kind of like, grab a fishing pole and, like, fish stuff out of here. Mm-hmm. Come around this way. We've got Pixel Palace. This one was built for Bunny. Uh, this was one of my very first castles ever built. It's, uh, it's designed after, uh, Sleeping Beauty, which is probably one of the best castles out there. But in just, a, like, a lot of things that's important to her, like, obviously, Alice in Wonderland. She loves mushrooms. Pocket watches. Doesn't like Mario, but I added it anyways. Uh, Karomi. Maybe she does like Mario, but I still added the star regardless. Um, probably made by iPhelps as well. These guys are supposed to be like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Thought these guys were smart and funny. Not smart. I thought they were funny. They're definitely not smart. Uh, we got like these little flamingos. Thought these were amazing too. Kind of like the, when they play cro uh, crochet or croquet. Croquet. And then we got Bunny. That's a soul gem from one of her favorite animes, I think. Axolotl with two different colors. With like the axolotl tanks with like mushrooms inside of them. Thought that was kind of neat. Kind of like a terrarium aquarium. Traquarium. Uh, and then she's got her area right here where she eats up all of her cake and stuff like that with the homies. You know? So everybody here just hanging out, enjoying some cake. Got a little mushroom right here. This was uh, her mod birthday and all that jazz. That's cute. A little bit of a flex, but yeah, she's got all of her guards there. Uh, but that's not all. We also have a small petting zoo. Or some of the animals are actually big, so don't be intimidated. We come over here. I don't know what we call this. Oh, they just called it the petting zoo. Yeah. Anyways, check it out. <laughs> Cute little area. Uh, we've got a bunch of baby mushrooms, the charge creeper, these menacing goats that were not difficult at all or a pain in the neck around armor stands. A uh, little area to enjoy some cake with some cookies and stuff. Skelly horses. That's a real pink sheep. Actually found a naturally generated pink sheep. Moved it all the way over here for her. Uh, then we got a little uh, a little uh, Jeb. <laughs> got some all lays kicking in here. I think we actually have like small turtles. I don't know if we'll be able to find them. Oh, we got a little Leo over there. Where yeah, these guys. What the heck? Turt twig, squirtle, blastoise. Some of them are so dang small you wouldn't even see them. But yeah, they're hanging out in the in the corner there. Probably talking smack. But yeah, we got like little sniffers. I didn't even know we had a little pig in here, but we do. But this is the Alice in Wonderland Island. There's a lot to take in here. You can see just in this small area, I've got a lot of houses. I've got all, like, these two islands. I built this island. I built this island from scratch. We'll get into that in a bit. Uh, but let's head on over here to this end ship right here. So this end ship is actually coming from somewhere in our world. And I'll show you guys that here in a bit. But this is when I got first introduced to microblocks in the game. This is what really kicked off my addiction for uh, microblocks. You can blame this guy right here. This is Mandolin. She's bringing in all of the micro blocks into the world, basically showing us how to uh, basically do those trades with the Wandering Trader to get these guys and stuff like that. So she's coming in on her little uh, end ship. So this basically took the channel to a whole nother level where we can have like a bunch of really cool small micro blocks and stuff. So, boy. 
This is where I organize up all of my micro blocks. Right down here, we got all kinds of micro blocks. You want like Hello Kitty and Melody and all that jazz. We store them all here. And if you've ascended in my world, you get your own custom head that nobody else can use. And it's only for you. So we got a bunch of people up in here that are all ascended. So this is an extremely cool area. All right, if you ever played Animal Crossing before, you'll kind of you'll kind of notice this island here a little bit. This is an Animal Crossing island. So this is Animal Crossing's airport. We call it the 13 Airlines, uh, run by Mycroft, one of the dodos. Uh, and then you can be on one of the planes from Zopa. And but this is uh this is the Animal Crossing little area right here. If you ever played it, this will be super nostalgic to you guys. Comes with its own little micro map too, of the entire island under de under development. But the whole concept of this island was people could buy houses and they can upgrade them over time, um, with like interiors and stuff. I won't go through all the interiors here because there's quite a bit to kind of take in here. But this is like a different. This is like kind of like how I get to be try to be creative and build stuff and all that jazz. So. I'll show you guys some really cool stuff that we have built along the way. We've got like cute little wagons over here and like little tiki um, tiki bar area where we get to hang out. This guy's way too sunburnt. We got Rand over here. He's mixing up some drinks. We got me and Armor Cross hanging out. Um, you'll find like these little ducky um, floaties and a little unicorn floaty uh, hanging out over here. These little wagons. Thought they were adorable. Uh, SpongeBob, dude. This is probably as close as you could possibly get to SpongeBob in the game. Spitting image. Uh, I got these guys over here for our like our mushroom uh, cart and our a um, little bit more of a lush cart over there. We got volleyball. It's totally not missing a cobweb because I needed one for something. Um, yeah, don't look at that. We got ourselves a tree. With some houses in it. Oh, it's built for football. Crazy. Let me like head on over here. I can show you guys something really flipping cool with my uh, all my redstone ingenuity and stuff like that. You probably would have no idea. Wasn't fast enough. Anyways, we got a little bit of an area in here. Bunch of cool like redstone and stuff like that. Check this out. Built that for corn. Get the heck away from there before I get like, um, uh, just turn that way off. Oh, yeah. I built that for corn. I thought that was really cool. All right. Some of these uh, houses in here you'll recognize as well. This is supposed to be Nook's Cranny, except I made it a Lynx Cranny. Uh, this was like where I first originally started selling micro blocks. We have all the hermits here because this is actually where it all started. It all started off with the vanilla tweak hermit pack. Um, and then it developed into something crazy. So I've got like my ferrets, I got myself and, you know, chickens and all that jazz. So this is supposed to be like the area and then mandolins, like kind of stocking up our shelves. The able sisters. Come in here. You're welcomed in with, uh, with warm hugs and flipping stuffs. We got Bunny over here showcasing all the cool poses you can buy. And then they just basically, like, you know, sell costumes uh, to show off the armor trims. This should be every armor trim in the game showed at some point. Just to get the advancement on, like, how to use them all. We got, the like, the museum from Animal Crossing with the coffee shop with Sin. And we got Kronos, who's got, like, the little bit of the... Uh, um, the museum type deal. Okay, let me show you guys some really cool stuff on this, uh, this island, though. Oh, before we go, this, I think this is my last one that I actually built. This is, uh, supposed to be, um, Red's bow, but it's run by Essentially, and you'll see why. She's got the dogs out, not wearing any shoes, don't ask why. Um, uh, but anyway, she's got her little bow right here. She hangs out. She also has her own house over here, too. 
Everything comes with like a little interior and stuff. Little interiors. They haven't bought them all up yet. Okay, let's start over here with this house. This is a pretty cool house. It's one of the most challenging builds I ever built. Balloons. Cool looking bow. Bye. Run by hamsters. Running on flipping wheels. Spinning the turbine. Propelling them through the air. Hello, dude. Anyways, this is Sam's boat. She chills out up here. She's got a little jack-in-a-box over there. I thought that was really cool. Uh, but she's got little hamsters and stuff like that that help her uh, basically get around and stuff. Um, I think I... Can I get up here? It's all fueled by this guy. That's a blaze. Those are supposed to be balloons. A little, like, uh, terminal right here. This was the first time I ever got to build a, um... This is my very first Japanese-style house right here. We learned a lot. I built this one for Zach. Never built a Japanese-style house before, so we kind of did, like, these really cool, like, decorative windows and stuff. Really cool. I don't know what Zach has planned for this build in the future, but... We got Flea's house. Comes with a bakery. Oh, Chain Chomp. Or Chomp Chain, or whatever the heck its name is. Little bakery in here. Simon. Teleported inside one of the ovens. Rip. And he's, he's actually buying these armor stands to put them in business. Seems like some sort of, uh, doesn't seem, doesn't seem that legal. Get that torch out of here. Oh, dude, check out this place, too. So this is, uh, Zen's wizard tower. He conjured up a, uh, really cool, like, area in here. So he could do all of his spells and stuff. But, had a really cool idea of building, like, a fairy garden down here. So down here, it's a small little fairy garden with like little like um, uh, little like fairies and little like logs and small little houses and small little bees at the maybe the fairies ride. This is supposed to be a snail. Uh, this is an OG cat from an actual witch hut. I thought this was such a cool project. That's a spider inside of a cobweb. Little trees, little gingerbread house. And all that jazz. Such a cool, fun build. Got Ghostina's little uh, castle house with her like, Christmas tree. Uh, we got bunnies. Um, uh, mushroom. I don't know what the heck can call this thing. Mushroom house. I don't know what to call it. She got her forever birthday party over here too with her uh, with some peeps chilling out. Got Sin's house down here. Little coral reef kicking around it. And uh, that's TMG's house. George's house. Just trying to learn how to build and stuff. This, you guys might recognize if you guys are a friend of our friends. If you're a fan of Adventure Time. So this is my the closest I could ever get it to Adventure Time. If you guys know about um, Princess Bubblegum. Hanging out on her cabin. This is built for Amanda. And she's got all of her varmints with a little spark coming up here for trick-or-treating. Oh, yeah, this is built for uh, Amandakin Skywalker. But, yeah, it's supposed, to have, uh, supposed to have a bunch of, like, varmints out here. She actually has a laboratory underneath here, too, because if you've ever seen um, the, um, what's it called, Adventure Time? This is Armor Cross's house. She's like a scientist. Like an evil scientist. So this is like her like little science room. She got like the uh she knows where the um power box is too. So there's that. Um we got the beef and beavers on the island. Run by a Freya. Uh, and Sam, and I'll show you guys that. We're like, they're kind of like trying to blow up each other's dams. The idea behind this was like, they're like fighting over control of who gets to, uh, who gets to like run the logging industry in the bottled water on the island because, you know, they've got like their dams cutting off the flow. 
So if I come all the way over here, we also have another beefing beaver. This is a spaceship. Like a crash landed spaceship I built for uh, Chazzy. Here's the other guys. It's supposed to be um, Hamsterdam. I uh, got Queen of the Dam. She's got like a little uh, a little tail um, and all that kind of stuff. And people are trying to sabotage the area, lighting it up. Got football crazy and APOC. And this guy's got a little beaver tail as well. Cute. Which brings us over to Melly's house. It's supposed to be a uh, a villa. Right here. Where we keep all of our screaming goats. Hello. So we got all of our screaming goats over here. They're all jumping to their impending doom to break their ankles. Don't ask why. But uh, 13. Uh, we got all of our um, llamas over here and rabbits. Coming in here. This guy is tripping. Anyway, it's run by Sin. It's supposed to be an art gallery. Like some masks and masks and stuff. It's supposed to be a vibe room where Abby just kind of vibes out, listens to frogs and stuff. In there. New addition. This is where she wants to display all of her cool micro blocks. But she keeps an eye on them at all times. Actually, Melly. Actually watching over her uh, her blocks. They're having a secret meeting over here. Discussing secret matters. There's a bunch of the Ascended up in here. Luscious isn't listening. She's got her headphones on. But yeah, everybody, uh, everybody is uh, all hanging out here. Mm -hmm. She's got like a little aquarium that actually looks way better now that, that I got uh, Navinium. It's not all busted. A little sand coming out of here too. Uh, if we go up these stairs, almost fell off. Little upper area where she's having a nice little Christmas party. We built this for Christmas. She get to hang out. Everybody brought gifts and got candles and she's bringing out some hot cocoa and you know, got essentially out here lobbing snowballs at people for no no reason. Um, bringing in gifts and stuff like that. I thought those were cute. Over here, this uh okay. So when we first started getting micro blocks in the game, I was getting way too many of Sin's head. She wanna used to be one of my moderators. So what we did was we built a bowling sin alley. So you can throw balls down the alley uh, at Sin. If you want. Supposed to be a bowling alley. Another little art gallery up in here. Showcase some cool stuff. Thought that was pretty neat. Like I said, this whole area is heavily under development. You'll see a lot of the uh, builds start to connect up over time. But this is this is uh, Frog Haven. So let's go to bed and we'll go check out my house over here. It's Gingerbread House. Okay. Brand new addition to this whole area. I built this guy on Christmas. This is supposed to be our Christmas project. There's a lot to this island. So much to this island. Alright, so let's uh, let's go down here. This was the first time I ever really got to build myself a house. So I wanted to go with a gingerbread house. I built this on Christmas. Oi. Got people like kinda hanging out. Obviously a map. But this is uh this is my house. We got uh Link's crib. Uh Santa Claus, some would say, the S and the C, but I say uh super cool. Guy lives there. All of our uh our reindeer, almost called them llamas. But that's obviously not true. Cupid and Comet, they're like lovers. Uh Vixen is jealous. Um we got Tiny Dancer. Flippin' hilarious. Uh, and then a bunch of people who are, like, you know, having snowball fights. This was all done on Christmas. Really neat. Uh, I got a little bit of an interior here. Oi. 
Andy Canes and stuff like that. We've got Santa. We've got me. All the moderators hanging out. Christmas tree. Sopa is going to put a notch apple on the top for the star. Didn't go too hard on the interior. Maybe I'll expand it later. Who knows? Um, but we also have the Grinch up there, too, if you look. He's stealing our presents. And we also have Brixie out here trying to help the Grinch, trying to steal my buttons. But yeah, this was a really fun build. Really cool. This is where I started wanting to do wacky uh, chimneys and stuff. I love it. But same concept as uh, that other island is I build uh, houses over here. They're not all like my design. This is built by um, uh, Heart Attack wanted that done. We've got people like throwing snowballs, running, crying, other people having snowball fights. Um, we go through here. This is all built on uh, on Christmas. Got Mono over here hanging out with one of his friends. This guy's literally a uh, pancakes. Gonna build a hot cocoa stand here eventually. Down here. This is a really fun build. So we got um, Girl Geek and Snow Pock out here hanging out underneath the mistletoe. But look at this, dude. This is funny. We got people doing like figure skating, skating, jumping into uh, things. This guy completely biffed it. That's Dearest. This guy is looking slick, just hanging out. That's Melly. She needs to do up her, uh, do up her, um, her fly. Uh, people hanging out, just doing all kinds of stuff. Paisley falling on her butt. Um, don't know what's going on with that guy, but I feel like I need to sneeze. Uh, we got a couple people playing hockey. You know, just a really fun, like, little build here. We got Abby over here. She's hanging out. She's like opening up her puppy present, which is really cute. Um, this guy's eating his bamboo. Hanging out. We got Zen over here creating some ice. But yeah, this is a lot of fun. Just trying to bring as much life into this uh, island as possible. We got bees pollinating stuff and people just walking around and hanging out and small little igloos over here where people get to hang out and just vibe out. Small little Christmas tree. I don't think we did interiors to this, did we? No. Yeah, just people hanging out. This is Brixie's house. Kind of, uh, I forget the style. Bavarian style house. I haven't built too many Bavarian style houses, but she's going to upgrade this over time. Girl Geek's house. I don't know why I said her name so flippin' weird. Um, anyways, she's got like these little like birds. It's supposed to be a Pokemon center slash Pokemon daycare these are supposed to be like birds from like pokemon and stuff really cool try to make something colorful but also fit on the island she's got a little easter egg here ash catch him with a little pokeball pokemon daycare and snow Pox, uh pokey training so very fun build this is uh, Paisley's cabin. This thing's supposed to be built out of uh, composters. I thought it looked very cabin-like, so I was like, I'm going to build a house out of composters. It'll be fun. It was fun. Um, so, yeah, we built this uh, this whole area up. Mm, and let's see if I can remember the name of the next house. This house was built for Abby, and it is based off of Harry Potter, Ron Weasley's house called... The flipping burrow or whatever the heck it's called. But anyways, I try to make it like kind of iffy. I try to make it work. It, was, it wasn't that easy. But yeah, we got that. So that's this island. We'll move over here to the God of XP. I built this guy up for Timmy. This is where I get a lot of my levels. Even though I'm pretty poor on levels right now. So if we come over here. Second organic in the game. Puff was my very first one. This was my second one. I wanted to build the Ender Dragon. It's supposed to be symbolic of the most amount of experience you can earn in the game is by killing the Ender Dragon. It's supposed to be like breaking its way out of here. It's a guardian farm. So that's why we have like the uh, the Elder Guardian and stuff like that. That was very tough to build. And then like we've got like the, the laser beams shooting out of the uh, eye. 
These are supposed to be experience orbs coming out of the dragon's mouth. Uh, not vomit. But yeah, we got people hanging out. Um, this is also where uh, Timmy rides the dragon with his uh, with his friends. It's supposed to be like uh, like all that kind of stuff. It's supposed to be like breaking up out of here and stuff like that. But if we work our way in here, it's supposed to be like based off of an Aztec temple. We got a heart, uh, almost called you heart attack, but it's airline. Uh, he's suspended by absolutely nothing. Like I said, this is my second one. So you saw how we had that end ship. Well, that end ship actually comes through like an interdimensional portal. Through here, this connects. This is where that, that dragon came out of. That's where that end ship came out of. It actually like lines up perfectly. Little dragon thingy right there. Kind of looks like Mortal Kombat. Uh, and then let me show you guys the actual farm behind this thing because it's actually nuts. And let me see if I can remember the person's name. Nimbom. I think designed this farm. But I get Nimbom and Il Mango uh, confused a lot. Let me repair my lights real fast. I'm pretty sure it's Nimbom. But I will correct myself if I'm wrong. But it's built, uh, it's designed by Nimbom. With a little bit of tweaks here and there to make it like a little bit more efficient for us. It gets us about 700-ish guardians in here at once. So let me come on in here. Through the interdimensional interdimensional portal. Sup. This is just like a sign to tell me to turn off my animated uh, mobs. Uh, let me also turn off hostile creatures so we don't blow you guys' eardrums out. Not about that life. But take a sip. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the guardian farm. Thing's nuts. Um, it's supposed to be like a little guardian room. Anyways, we come over here. We wait for this thing to kind of like fill up. So we'll get about, like I said, 700 guardians in this little area. I have a waterlogged TNT. I'm pretty sure Nimbom uses uh, splash damage potions, but I wanted to use TNT because not only is TNT cooler, but you know, um, it does more damage. So right now I've got about... Uh, where is it at? I got about 571 mobs in here right now. So I just light it up. Stand back, because we don't want to get blown up. And then they all get blown up. And then you just sit here and you just, like, take in, like, an insane amount of levels. I can repair, like, so many items this way. Typically, I can get about, like, you know, six pickaxes repaired. All in, like, one go. And then by the time I'm done, like, collecting the experience... Uh, the guardians will like recycle and they'll start going through here again. So pretty much how this farm works and then just made a little bit of a room here um, to make it a little bit more decorative. I have a little bit of a loader back here, which is empty, which is probably why it was a little bit slower. Um, it's just so the guardians have a place to go through. So they don't like despawn in the uh, on the overworld. Just sit here and just get levels, you know? Get rich. All right, let's do a little bit of backtracking. I'll show you guys a little bit of the nether builds we have because there's quite a bit to it. And then we'll head over to the end. But yeah, that's how we get all of our experience in the game. Straight through that guy. With that also being said, hold on. Try not to die. Check it out. Uh, we recently passed um, half a million guardians killed. We're going to try to hit one million guardians killed in this world from that farm because the thing is absolutely wild. Don't look at the back of those builds. I was a different person back then. Different person back then. So we're just going to avoid that look altogether. Um, I do the backside of my builds now. I don't want to be judged. Just don't look at the side of it either. All right, there we go. Woo. Okay. Anyways, let's do. Uh, let's go check out where I get all my beacons from. My Wither Skelly farm. 
my blaze farm and my way over the top nether wart farm all in the nether and then we'll go to our end which has got quite a bit going on right now I'm totally not building a giant sphere in there so I've got a bunch of tunnels that lead throughout the world one of them being this guy right here. This heads to the blaze farm. So we'll go to our blaze farm first. This was a this was a really fun one to do. It's supposed to be like a battle between the piglins and the mages, which are supposed to be blazes. It's supposed to be like a war going on between the two, and you'll see a little bit of development for that in the future. But here's the, um, here's my blaze farm. So I tried so dang hard to find, like, a double blaze spawner. Couldn't find it. No matter where I did, uh, where I went. So it's supposed to be a blaze, like, shooting flames at you with, like, the blaze rods and stuff. When I first started doing, uh, pixel art. And then we've got our spawner up there. And we just kind of sit down here and we just, like, swipe away and kill the uh, blazes it's supposed to be a giant soul lantern oh, there's a there's a there's a gas around here that's freaking me out I've been blown up over here anyways now the Jawa stealing toilet paper while Zopa sits on his porcelain throne and then he got all of the, the people who hang out here and guard him and guard him on his throne talk about a grind early game but check this out this is all shroom lights and I don't duplicate any TNT in the world. So I don't have a proper tree farm. This was a flipping grind. That was a grind. I remember that just being like an absolute nightmare. Anyways, he's got all of his, um, he's got his army and they all come out of these, uh, these lanterns basically. That's like their homes. That's the blaze farm. Oh, with the uh, with the eternal flame. I love this. Okay, over here. Now we're going over to the god of red rivers. This is where all the piglins are coming out of. I built this place for elusive over here. This thing's a crazy nether war farm. Gives me about twenty thousand nether war. And that's where you get, like, these uh, red nether bricks from. Really cool building block. Also, where I, I thought I was slick with it, using a bunch of glazed terracotta. I didn't know how to use it back then. I now know how to do it. Anyways. Supposed to be, like, kind of like a cathedral. Probably my biggest build at the time. Never, never built a cathedral before. So I thought it was pretty dang cool to build a cathedral. But like the concept of big is going to change as we go through a lot of the builds. So here it is. I built this all up for elusive. Um, God of Red Rivers. So he's got a little bit of the uh, the inside. He's also got a massive army. He's got his archers. He's got his sword dudes. And then he hangs out here on his throne. Um, down here is actually where the, the netherware farm is. Got a little guy ripping around. Probably one of the mods. Don't have a proper way of getting in and out of here, mainly because of all A's. This is where this is where I get a lot of my netherware from. <laughs> We just hang out down here and we just farm nether wart. Gets a lot of nether wart down here. Things absolutely wild. So there is the god of red rivers. Uh, where's the hole? Wait. I'll take you guys over to the wither skelly farm that I made. Which was dug by hand. I now officially have, I think, over two... What is it? Uh... I got 2.7 million netherrack, not all from the Wither Skelly farm, but a good majority, I think it was like around almost 2 million 
uh, before I started taking on this project, because obviously there's a lot of netherrack that needed to be dealt with. So I'll take you guys over to the Wither Skelly farm. This uh, this whole nether hub th uh, project, though, was uh, quite a bit because of all the different pallets and having to go back and forth. This one's like glass, too, just so I can see the nether. Oh, if we fly over here. Back to the hub. Oh, I really hope it doesn't blow up my stuff. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Missed. Anyways, anyways. We haven't connected up all the tunnels yet. But this is where I get all my beacons. I don't know if that's obvious. Uh, but I got a few beacons in here. This leads us to our very first perimeter. Um, it took me about three months at the time to dig out. But that's because it was my very first perimeter. And it burnt down a little bit of the face, so don't mind. Anyway, it's got some end islands and um, a big a bit of a bridge with the uh, fog effect. We got an, uh, another ghast out here. Um, this completely burnt down. But well, you can see that we have Wither Skelly spawning in. So it is a double, basically, where all these Wither Skellies will basically um, spawn in and fall into a kill chamber for me. But yeah, everything you see here is 100% hand dug. And I don't even know if I could really put it into perspective other than standing down here. And it's knowing that we dug this all out by hand is a pretty big testament. I just went down to the I just went down to the lava layer though. So huge respect to people who go past the lava layer because that's nuts. Built some like little like miniature volcanoes over here too. Um I wish there's a way that I can get into that, but I got a small little hole over here. But if we come through here. Got a little bit of the interior here. Got a little, like, double hardcore heart. And then as we go down here... Hold on. Let me just... Because it gets really flipping loud. We were playing around with a couple of really cool things. So, that's a pixel art that's not busted. This is a really cool effect of having ender chests underneath carpets. Which is uh, very neat. To get that effect. This is the kill chamber for all the wither skellies. It's where I get all the bones in the game. Can't wait for the crafter. All of our wither skulls. It's where I get all my beacons. Uh, and all the coal as well. And then I got some little garbage cans over here that clearly are not working. Um, but I pop myself up into the air. Get a bunch of uh, wither skellies together. And then I just sit here. And I swipe away. I think it gets me, no joke, not even joking, about 420 skulls an hour. I, uh, I didn't follow a tutorial for this at all. I just kind of like winged it and I think it turned out well. I may or may not have had to build this thing twice because it didn't work the first time, but I digress. Still works. So we'll get on up out of here now. You can tell how loud that is. All right, I'll take you guys over to the witch farm area. Because there's a couple builds to see away over there. Um, we'll probably end off at the Ocean Monument because there's so much to see by the Ocean Monument when it comes to uh, Hall of Fames and stuff like that. But it's like pretty integral part of my world. So come through here. This actually leads to my Ocean Monument. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Come all the way through here. All the tunnels I tried theming after like different areas that we're going to and stuff like that. So that leads to my nether. Maybe we'll maybe we'll go there. We'll just like work our way straight through. So we actually will go to our ocean monument. Anyways, this is the um the witch farm area. I thought it was so flipping rich with this floor. I'll never financially recover when it comes to uh, respawn anchors and crying obsidian. Because, oh my gosh, this floor probably took me the longest out of any floor I've ever done. 
but I love it. Yeah, get out of here, dude. Um, yeah, coming through here. It's supposed to be like to our witch area. This one's built for football crazy. I also have another one over here, the totem. Uh, this is where I get a. Uh, this is where I do all my raids, and I'll show you guys how we do that. Not in full detail, but I'll show you guys how that works. It's supposed to be like the inside of a rib cage too, like, and you'll see why uh, when we make our way over there. So over here, this is the biggest fog effect I have in my world with over 80,000 purple glass used. 80,000 purple glass, dude. Hello? So 80,000 purple glass and about 40,000 black glass. Going all the way down here. Um, thought I was, um, thought I was nuts. Anyway, it's got all these, like, cool-looking mushrooms, like, nice little, like, geodes, and we put, like, little, like, geodes inside of here and stuff. Um. Got, um, some cool people walking on the void. Put a bunch of stars in here, too. Just to kind of flex our wealth. But this is inside of a swamp, and of course it's raining, but I guess that's the swamp life. Um. To try to build a bunch of like really cool mushrooms trying to get better at building mushrooms i love building mushrooms um this right here this is uh supposed to be like a haunted mansion this is the first one of the first mansions i ever built and i love this thing so this is football crazy's mansion it actually has a gas which we found out gas only face one way ever which is like i think self right yeah they only face self dude so I actually had to move two of these guys over here. This guy's name is S'mores, but we did have a Rose at one point. Which, um, you know, big saggies. Put a little bit of a witch hat on him. But now we know there's also, there's mods out there that, uh, you know, like I said earlier, round has made. One Wither Skelly, because I'm pretty sure a pig pushed one of my Wither Skellies off and almost got killed. So that was a good time. We got these cauldrons over here for brewing up some potions. With an impulse SV uh, potion, auto, automatic potion brewer back there. Which is really cool. Build up all like these, uh, these potions just automatically. No matter what, you know? So we've got ourselves fire resistance, slow falling, water breathing, night vision. You know, all the potions. Not all the potions, but you know, a lot of the potions. So that's like the interior here. Oh, oh, never mind. I thought it wasn't raining. Little graveyard down here. One of the first. This was the first dead tree I ever made. Big yikes. Uh, we have a dead villager here that used to be in my villager trading hall, that I may or may not have actually fell into with a sword. This is a witch farm. So this is a Rayworks design. Thought it was really cool because they used Zoglins. Supposed to be like a crypt. Really neat. I lit up the caves around this area for so dang long. But basically they fall into there and they just die. And then I just collect resources from them. You know? So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, we got an OG witch cat right there. Back here, we have a bunch of other stuff, and I'll, we'll get into that here in a minute. Little, like, uh, pumpkin area. You know, some houses made out of acacia. Supposed to be, like, kind of like our Halloween town. These things are really cool. Supposed to be, oops. Supposed to be, like, scarecrows. We got, like, these cool, like, trees. Like, whatever the heck this thing is. Uh, Halloween shop, so if you want to come buy some, like, um, some Halloween stuff. I think this is called a apothecary. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But a place where you make potions. Apothecary? Apothecary? Whatever the heck it is. Little witch house. We got a swamp villager that I haven't done anything with, uh, with yet. Trick or treaters. Yeah. 
bats up in the uh, up in there. Actual interior to this place. Hello, dude. Bats. Built this up for Sam. She's the mayor around these parts. We got airline. Sam. Sis. Looking good. Those calf muscles. Yeah, this was a really cool build. Struggled with this chimney. Uh, also try to do some like really cool like uh, like roof styles and whatnot. So this is just like a normal looking house. Ocean. This was just a fun build, dude. Uh, I forget what these things are called. Um, Yaba, Yaga, or whatever the heck they are. But they're supposed to be like house monsters. Baba Yaga. Whatever the heck it is. But this thing was hilarious. I built this for Mini. Just put some glasses on them. Put some weird looking hands on them. Funny, funny house. Put a little bow tie on them. Got these weird looking uh, feet. Ah, I thought I was going to say phalanges, didn't you? Anyways, we got a cool looking uh, pumpkin guy. All right, we fly over here. This is the inside of Football Crazy's house. Where we can actually see the ghast. Hello. Um, this is supposed to be like the interior of her like little like witch house. Uh, this is a really cool effect right here, dude. I thought I look at look at this. Hello. That's so cool. There's fence posts. Uh, where we got like football crazy kind of hangs out here. Chills. Essentially up to no good as per usual. You could tell this was the time before I had like a lot of micro blocks, so I don't have any potions or anything. But we can come up here. Nice little like interior area. If you want to use like an enchantment table. But yeah. Alright, let's go over to our raid farm and then we will go over to our ocean monument quickly. And then we'll head over to like our, our end and then our city and stuffs. Don't ask why I use, like, um, Crying Obsidian for any of this. I have no idea. Probably just for flexing and stuff like that. But we're out here. Um, alright, so we'll go over to do the God of War. Right here. This is where I fight all my raids by hand, manually. Um, because I don't have a raid farm. So we do things a bit differently. So we got the skull, like the inside of the skeleton here. Because on the other side, we got a flippin' T-Rex skull, dude. It's supposed to be like, kind of like through both ways. Oh so yeah, we got uh, we got the, the whole stadium over here. I tried building a bunch of houses around here. They're probably the most hardest things I've ever had to do because of like the lack of detail in the style that I was trying to build. I was struggling hard. Um, but yeah, we got all kinds of cool uh, builds. Try to give this place some life. Mm -hmm. Got a, like a little forge area where it totally didn't burn down or anything like that. Outdoor market area for people who want to like, you know, come by and buy some stuffs. Oh, that's a cool map. Come through here. This is how we enter it. We got dragons holding a notch apple, sloth, and sizzle sore, and this guy. I don't know why we. Well, I don't know why we have him. Honestly, he's not even that special. Could probably get these anywhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, look at this. Bam. But we never do that. We just jump over it. But yeah, this is supposed to be like the inside of the Colosseum where I fight my raids. Underneath this bell, I have a villager. And we'll just fight raids up in here. Um, I actually got a pretty decent amount of vexes killed in this game because of this. Uh, we're sitting at around 3,787 vexes. 
All right, let's go to bed so we could potentially get rid of the rain because I feel like this is the rain tour. No matter what, just feels like we're just constantly being rained on. Bruh. Mm -hmm. All right. Ocean Monument. I'm just going to show you guys the monument. I won't show you guys the uh, the Hall of Fames or anything like that because we have a lot of Hall of Fames and they are very expansive. So I'll show you guys to where uh, I'll show you guys the Hall of Fame towards the end of the video. Kind of like a credits. So you guys can see like all the uh, cinematics of every single Hall of Fame basically. Because it is so much. All right. Like, this is just a little bit of it. Like, these are the Hall of Fames of, like, literally over 540 people are in this uh, this Hall of Fame area. It's crazy. So we'll just focus on this area. My very first ascension. My Ocean Monument. So... Back before uh, the Caves and Cliffs update, this used to actually be bedrock. So I actually dug this thing all the way down to bedrock, and then I held it up using tridents, which I thought was very, very cool. Obviously, I had to change that because they changed the um, the uh, the limit of the world, basically. But this is the uh, Ocean Monument. Built this for Outsider. It's my best friend. He's got the Heart of the Sea and the Trident. He's got a nice, like, little cool lore. Also, where we ended up getting our blue axolotl was by breeding up all these weird... These axolotls. Not weird axolotls, but they're just axolotls. We had a fountain over here with a bunch of fish that inevitably died over time. Obviously, the guardian farm. That's where I get a lot of my prismarine. And uh, sea lanterns. I caught one of these guys. Check this guy out. Hello? This was uh, probably one of the hardest things I ever had to catch. The full-on Skelly Rider. So I'm waiting for a pumpkin guy. But on the inside of the Ocean Monument, we built up uh, what we call Terra Temple. In here. We have the Guardian who shoots a laser beam. If I had my beacon uh, beams on, you would see like beams coming through here. Guardian Farm. That's actually broken because I didn't put signs on this side. They all fell off because me being a doofus. This is just where I get a bunch of like small little like little terraforming stuff that I can add throughout the world. Uh, you know, if I need glow like and if I need glow berries, if I need bamboo, uh, you name it. I get it all through the Terra Temple, basically. Uh, vines and all this jazz. Roots. Kelp. I even got a water source because we fancy like that. So that's the Terra Temple. More importantly, besides Outsider, I have my boat over here. It's supposed to be like kind of like a sunken ship. By like Davy Jones and stuff. This is where I end all of my streams and start all my streams, obviously, because that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So this is where I kind of chill out and I sit. I'm like, yo, what's up? So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, we've got warden heads. We have um, the piglin head. Those were, like, obviously, like, from killing the warden and killing the piglin with the charged creeper. Kind of try to do, like, my own Zelda theme back here. Obviously. Big fan. We got a notch apple. This is the last end stone. That it took to mine out our entire end island. Um, and there's some rare things. I got five years on Twitch. My one millionth stone. My very first ancient debris from my wither farm. I think this was one year without popping a totem. I've now gone like a year and a half without popping a totem. Or something around that. Yeah, it's a little bit of a boat where I basically supply my hall of fame. Mm, and I also have a book. These are all the ascensions of everybody who I am basically working on right now. So you guys saw Mob Boss. I'm working on this one right now. <laughs> but that's the Ocean Monument. 
Okay, uh, let's go to the end because there's a lot to see. There's a lot to see inside the end. So we'll fly up on over there. We'll even take a super cool minecart track ride that I built for um, uh, the blonde. And I'll show you guys an underground secret thieves guild that you guys would really like. I built that one up for essentially. Come through here. This connects me back to my my main base, that portal that you guys saw. And then I kind of come through here. Go through my little uh, aqua area. Back into the storage room where all of my mobs are despawned. But that's okay. I already showed you guys them. Alright, so over here is Essentially's. The Thieves Guild. That has a micro block sound to it, but I, I have those all turned off, which I should probably turn on. So what do we keep that at? 70, I think? So it sounds like this. Pretty cool. Alright, this is it. This is kind of like my overworld hub. We have the respawn anchors that's supposed to be symbolic of the sun, and then we got the moon. We got like the stars and stuff like that over here. I try to put as much detail into the walls, the moon here. Eventually, these areas are going to go into different directions of the world. Like different areas of the world. This one's going to go to our end, and I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But this is our overworld hub. Kind of like the nether hub, but for things that are a little bit closer. Probably hear that. But we have two wardens down here in our labyrinth. I have it I have them like basically turned off right now because obviously I can't show you this build if I got wardens kicking around here. It's supposed to be a labyrinth. You're supposed to like kind of sneak around and open up chests and practice um, your stealth. So it's supposed to be a school for thieves. This room is, um, you know, ran by uh, Griffin. So let me just kind of like turn down the mob sounds here real fast. So we're not listening to those guys all day. Uh, we got Zopa. He's ripping on in here. But this is like the underground lair. Kind of like the, uh, the guild. Ran by essentially. And her, her homies all kind of hanging out here. And that's why you see Jawads all over the world. They basically work for her. We got some other classes out here. We got a class over here run by Bunny. About curses and wishes. We have uh, Dark Angel over here who's kind of got a botany area. This is where we started to play around with like a lot of detail, but uh, like a lot of kelp. Played a lot with kelp. What a fantastic building block. But I love the roof in here. This is a vault that's going to get an expansion in the future. So if we go through the other side of this vault, it's hollowed out. So I, I plan to expand that. We have a little Jawa right here. He's trying to figure out how to open it. But it basically, like, rolls over to the side, basically. Behind that wall. So it just, like, rolls over. Uh, we have a banquet hall. I thought this was like, a really cool thing. It's, this was inspired by Harry Potter. Our banquet hall with, like, the... What are these things again? Um, Oh, redstone lamps? I thought that was a really cool effect. And then our library, probably one of my favorite libraries that I've ever built with like the really cool like kelp and the, uh, the ceiling and all that jazz with like this like really cool like uh, enchantment area if you ever need to do into some enchantments. So I thought those were a really neat area. So that is the goddess of thieves. Essentially, 
that is going to get an expansion through the vaults. Who knows what she'll steal. And up here... Like I said, that will lead to different areas all throughout the world. But, first, I'll show you guys where this one leads right now. So, this is how I basically want to do everything up in this uh, in the world. So, we'll turn our mob sounds back up just so I don't get ganked midway. This is a, I think it's like a two, three minute minecart track ride. That leads us out to our end. So... This area is our mushroom, our bioluminescent uh, underground mushroom cave. See, like little jaw, like not jaw was, uh, little Koroks and stuff like that. People hanging out underground mushroom areas. Hopefully, I don't get blown up in here. That's a uh, that's like a spawner into a cave system with like canaries and all that jazz. We tried utilizing uh, different music discs to make like really cool effects like that. This is supposed to be my Mesa, but like kind of has like little Easter eggs with me, like holding my moss blocks. And we got Wiley Coyote and um, the Roadrunner right there. It's supposed to be like kind of like our Mesa before the Masa came to be. Ocean Monument. Like octopus and tridents and orca whales and hammerhead sharks. And a bunch of like aquatic Pokemon and just a couple uh, other like little Easter eggs that you'll see along the way. Tried building up these like really cool jellyfish. Thought this was really cool. Somebody getting eaten by a jellyfish. This area, this area took a long time to put together. So this area is pretty crazy. It's about to get pretty dank in here. The haunted mansion. Lots of Easter eggs in here. So this is supposed to be like uh, Pokemon the first movie with like Mew and Mewtwo and stuff. The Shining. And if you guys like pick up any other Easter eggs, let me know because I got a lot in there. Uh, this is supposed to be kind of like a temple. Like a desert temple area where we go in here like Indiana Jones and we get shot with like arrows and have the, the flipping floor like disappear from underneath our feet into like a tomb. Super Mario. So we got Yoshi right there. Got a piranha plant that launches us up into Rainbow Road. We can kind of like look around. We got like the... If you ever played uh, Super Mario Kart, this is supposed to be... This is inspired by Super Mario Kart. We got all like the Super Mario stuff. And we built this one up for, uh, for Blonde. My third... My third organic. And this is our hub. Or end hub. I guess. Let me just chuck that out. Uh, let's swap this guy on here. We'll take this. I got lots of other stuff. Okay. It's supposed to be like the solar system here. So we have the sun. We have this guy who's being ejected into space because he's sus. We have the end dragon. We have a present. Uh, we got aliens on Mars. You, we got uh, Uranus. All that kind of stuff. Rainbow Road, of course. This I forget the, the name of this dragon, but I love this dragon. The third dragon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Haku. Uh, Alright, let's go into the end. So, hopefully this works. Alright, cool. Alright, so. We mined out their entire... Mainly, we mined out a good majority of our end island. We did blow up some with some TNT we made. Uh, just shooting us right below 900,000 endstone. But this is all built for Tanley, the god of portals. That's a future build, and we'll get into that here in a, f in a bit. But yeah, this is it. The whole end island, or lack thereof. But well, we got every single portal. We've killed the dragon over 20 times to so open up every single gateway with hardcore hearts. Never use them because we don't trust them. This is decommissioned right now. 
This is where I get all my my um wither stars. We got the end turtle over here, but let me let me see if I can find this area up here. So I have like an um Oh there it is. I have this guy. There it is. So that is my end with all of my portals going all the way around. And my little gazebos and stuff like that and all the end islands and a bunch of stuff uh, under construction out here. So. We come down here. I'm actually getting rid of the pillars. Slowly but surely. It's a, it's a work in progress. So I'm getting rid of the pillars down here. And you'll also see if I yeet myself into the void here real quick. Um, it's actually glass down here, but let me explain to you guys why there's glass down here. So, whoops, didn't mean to do that. So when you're using maps inside of the end, typically a lot of the time the void is gray, but we're doing this because all this black glass actually looks black. Like what the, what the void should look like. So... Should make our builds look a lot better if we completely glass the uh, the bottom of our end. Obviously, don't look at the bottom of that. That's going to get a makeover eventually. But anyways, that's the reason for all the glass down here. Other than the obvious uh, like safety reasons. Put that guy in here too. If you guys missed how, uh, missed how I got this guy, then you missed an important part of the video. Should totally go back and watch. Um, anyways, we got over here, leading up to where I kill all the withers. We've killed over 2,000 withers in this world, basically right underneath this bedrock, where we turn them into wither roses, and then I've got a little, like, uh, yeeter over here. So anything I throw in here will just get yeeted right into the void. I can turn that off, just in case. But yeah, we just have, like, our wither skulls, and our soul sand, and swipe away and we take down withers and that's basically where all the beacons come from over here this is the god of celebrations this is a big build in the world like like not in size but like very very important this is my second or third blossom trees i've ever did we come down here but if you ever get yourself bored, you should build one of these. And I'll explain to you guys why here in a little bit. So, like I said, these are like our um, my one of my blossom trees trying to learn. Got some uh, some people hanging out underneath here, and got some gazebos, and got some like really cool like spotlights and holographic lights and all that jazz. But as we work our way up here, you can see like a giant S. I built this for Sizzlesaur. And then he's got all of his like guards and stuff. But over here is an extremely influential part of the build. And this is my board of achievements. So we've got the 1 million club. Everything I've got into the 1 millions of this world. This is every single one of those big builds that I'm currently showing you right now in order. All of our, like, finalized ascensions. This is all of our farms. So that's very cool. This is also where we put a star for every 5,000 days that we survived in Minecraft. So this is a really cool board to kind of keep going. We have our 100k on YouTube, one year without popping a totem since whatever the heck day that is, 100k on Twitch, just like little mementos and stuff like that, little achievements along the way. Got our gazebos. This is actually a rocket testing facility. We'll get into that here in a minute. Over here. I'll show you this just real quick. This is like nothing crazy over here. This is where I get a bunch of the dyes. And I have a sea pickle farm behind here that I completely forgot about. Uh, for green dye. Lime green dye. If you furnace up sea pickles, you'll get lime green dye. 
right here. Rocket testing facility, kind of like the rocket testing facility I showed you earlier, but bigger. If I just like flick this lever, if there's, oh, there is stuff in there. Hey, look at that. I can kind of see like different stuff. This is where I craft up all those rockets. We'll go like through diamonds, glowstone. They all do different cool stuff. This one makes stars. This one gives you a, like, I think this is a trail and one of these gives you a sparkling effect. I don't know. It's been a while, but that's where I craft up all my rockets. And then I look at them before I actually use them and where I use them is way up here. This is where we do all of our fireworks shows now. Or sizzle sore. They all just like kind of like over here. And then I just press that. I'm like, all right, cool it. And that basically turns on the entire um fireworks show, basically, and like they all pop off and do their thing. Um I don't know if there's like another button. Probably just used up all the uh, rockets. Yeah. So there's this. Got some uh, Sam and um, Melly trying to catch the fireworks show. His little, he made this pixel art. This was really cute. Kind of like ducks. We got like this little like um, table in here. Ducks, chickens. I don't know why I called them ducks. Up here, this is supposed to be an exploding, like a giant exploding firework. supposed to be like a giant firework like bang all blowing up with like terracotta going like literally everywhere with like the nucleus of the center of there so that's really cool all right so that is the god of celebrations anytime we need to celebrate anything this is where we come All right, let's go into our turtle master. I guess this was a this was actually my 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 third organic or my second organic in this world. Anyways, it's inspired by like Torterra. With um I forget this guy's name. This is a Pokemon. Um Pod Soul or some sort of ghost type Pokemon that looks like a sandcastle. Anyways. Really cool area. We actually have like these eggs on the back of the turtle. Kind of like how it transports its eggs, because obviously where else are you gonna like lay them? But we got all it's supposed to be like a tropical island, but we got some really cool like little Easter eggs in here. So these are like um these are scavenger hunts. This scavenger hunt box is like two years old. Hello? So yeah, we kinda keep those and um stuff like that. Thought it was really neat. Paulo Sand. Yeah, I think that's what the that guy's name is. Paulo Sand. And I think I might have one in here too. Except I don't know when the I don't know when that one was done. So. Mm -hmm. Could be Sandy Gas. I don't know. If you guys know, let me know in the comments. This is my very first honey farm. Ish, I think. I have a lot of honey farms, so it's kind of hard to keep track of how many honey farms I built in this world. They kind of just followed me around there for like a while, you know? But I built all this for Catcumber. Catcumber, the turtle master. We got like a turtle up in there. We've got some axolotls in here with some turtles. He hangs out with his cat. Who's got his head inside the thing. But anyways, this cat is actually like pretty influential. It took me flipping so long to find an orange cat in this game. And that was it. So, um, yeah. Go around here. It's got like a little moat that have like turtles and stuff that haven't yeeted themselves into the void. Thankfully. Little, uh, little campsite. Fantasia hanging out with his friend. Uh, we got Richard over here. He dead. This is where we actually used to do our fireworks shows as well. Back here is like a miniature sandcastle that I used to have a turtle that I try to keep alive. But, you know. 
over here is actually where I get all my turtle eggs in the world. Bam! Turtle farm. Super fancy. And this is the inside of the uh, the turtle that has probably 57,000 stacks of sea lanterns just to make sure that I wasn't going to get killed by an enderman. So, you know. Super high-tech facility. All right. But anyways, one of my main goals is to fill the entire 1,000 by 1,000 block area around here with builds. But probably wondering, because they all kind of look like their own standalone builds right now, like how we're going to basically bring those together. And... Bringing those together actually brings us to our newest project that I haven't really told anybody about yet. So over here, this build right here is actually going to uh, bring all of my entire end together. Make everything look a little bit more seamless throughout uh, this whole area. This farm right here will be dismantled and rebuilt somewhere else. That's, uh, that's a skulk. Uh, thing. I'll get rid of that beacon, and I think I also have an endermite just out here somewhere, but this is built without Livematica. Do I have to remind you that this is, uh, this has taken up a good majority of my life? Massive majority of my life trying to build this flipping sphere, but look at the size of this thing. This is going to be the next ascension. That's going to bring my entire end together. And this is just the focal point. So if you want to follow this, you can see it all live on Twitch. But this will be me putting in just a little bit of a perspective for you guys. Absolutely nuts. Only messed it up a couple times around this area. Other than that, it's been kind of smooth sailing. Planning to hopefully finish this sphere here pretty, pretty dang soon, so... All right, let's go over to our city. Yeah, it's been 84 years we've been working on that. I'm kidding. It's only been four days. All right. I wonder where we were last. All right. Should have maybe set my spawn, but let's head on over towards the city area. Or, actually, before we go to the city area, let me show you guys our fox sanctuary. Which was the very first floating island I ever built in this world. Because, wow. I've actually had to build that island twice. Because I messed up the shape of it the first time. Was not a good time. Turned out okay. Like I said, it was like my very first uh, floating island and. This whole world's been a huge learning curve, and you're going to see some, like, you're going to see some very on, fairly early on builds pretty dang soon. But I'll show you guys the future of this build, because I'm going to be working my way out here. We have an ice tunnel. Do I have... Oh, I thought I would have had, like, polar bears or something. All right, here it is. Come through here. I built this for TMG. A little bit of a fox sanctuary. This is where I keep all of my foxes in the world. Orange foxes. And there should be arctic foxes around here too. Mm -hmm. This guy's slipping on ice. Uh, over here. We have TMG. With some wine. His two foxes. Down here. This is when, uh, I almost called them turtles, when frogs first came out to the game. Little frog sanctuary. It's like a nice little area where I was able to breed up some uh, green frogs. Don't have them all, but... Mm -hmm. I'll show you guys the floating island aspect of this. I got, like, my, um, my different, different, um, this is supposed to be a phoenix fox, regular fox, ender fox, and, uh, the arctic fox.
that's the Masa slash Mesa that I live out in. Okay, but this was like the first ever like island that I ever built floating up in the sky. On a scale this big, it was extremely hard to pull off. Probably one of the most challenging things I've ever had to do. But yeah. And then I tried to build a castle on it, and then I tried to do um, like a snowflake in the middle. And then he's got his, uh, his flags for Germany. But the future of this, when I get better at islands, I want to build more. I want to build more floating islands around here and kind of like make like an ice spike floating island area around this. I think that would be absolutely fantastic when I make my way out here one day. If we carry on over here, we're back to the Masa, which will just fly straight across and we'll go straight to our uh, straight to our city, which is our industrial district of the world. Uh, there's a lot to see over there. So we'll be back here. I can show you guys a little bit more of the Masa when we get to it. All right, over here, the city, I actually have big plans for the city to expand the city as we go. This is just one city block, but later on down the road, I want to build like multiple districts, like multiple blocks of the city. I built this one up for Om. Let me go to bed real quick. So we built this up for Om. He's supposed to be like kind of like a super rich tycoon. Let me turn off my note blocks as well because those are on. You can see, you can hear all the farms working on in the background. Anyways, I wanted to get better at doing modern builds, something a little bit more modern, a little bit more clean, not so rustic. But I also wanted to get better at building vehicles. So we got all kinds of vehicles out here. We got like little farming trucks, building like some cool like stuff. This is supposed to be like traffic cones, being like we're gonna build past there. Uh, we got our little like indicators for the street, street, street caters. Mopeds, a little bit of a, a little bit of an Easter egg over here. We got Toad, and then this is our very first Christmas. We'll get into that here in a minute. Well, that was like our second Christmas or something like that. I'll show you guys like some of our first Christmases. Motorcycle. Okay, let me see if I got this right. I think this was a uh, Nimbom, Pellin, Melon, Pellin, Melon and Pumpkin Farm. Thing goes, uh, thing goes hard. I got way too many flipping, um, way too many of them. We got like hippie vans. We got hostels. If you want to kind of like hang out here in an Airbnb or whatever. We got a little moped shop right here. Little guy with his paper out money looking to get a moped. Uh, dig a lamb over here trying to sell the keys, you know. Our hippie van. A couple of hippies hanging on the back, drinking some water. We have a bunch of farms up in here. We have like a shady alley. Sup? Selling totems. We got um, a Amandazon van. We got like little like eye impulse um, eye. Like graffiti. Over here, we got Luscious. This time, doesn't have her head on. This is like a masseuse area that also sells you like rocks and minerals. But you can have like a massage. You can go uh, have a hot tub. Your legs will literally fall off here. That's how good the massages are. Ambulances, buses. This is a, a Japanese restaurant run by Yoshimi. Thought, I love this, like, this little table here with, like, the banners and stuff like that. Uh, we got all the fish. It's supposed to be, like, kind of like a uh, flat top where they, like, make up all the foods and stuff. Uh, katana. We got a puffer fish over there that I don't dare to get close to. Otherwise, it will die. Learned that multiple times. It's not my first puffer fish in there. 
Graffiti girl next door doing her graffiti stuff. Mumbo and uh, Corrales. This guy's like crawling up our flipping uh, our, our wall here, I guess. <laughs> Motorcycle. Outsider again, breaking his leg. We got a little TARDIS back here. For you guys who are, who are fans of Doctor Who. Arcade. This is a lot of fun. Little arcade area run by Scoville. We got Bop a Chicken. We got little um little things. Little arcade. We got this area right here. There's like a DDR station. This is also where I keep one of my most rare discs in the game that I completely forgot about. Popcorn machine. Book vendor. Take a photo in front of this weird looking alien guy. In here is actually a farm. Cactus farm and a flower farm up there. It's supposed to be a camera. Got more popcorn. We have this guy's name is Stormtrooper. Although I should have named this guy Stormtrooper, but this guy literally never hits this guy. That's a zombie. And then we have um, Zoidberg Claws. That don't look like anything else. But yeah. So there's that. I have a purper, coarse flower, mud farm, sheep farm. I got a bunch of farms in here. That I'm not even going to show you because they're just, I don't know, it's just a lot. We have a little gapple truck. Yoga mat. Run by Luscious. You want to become super limber and you can have like a little juice after. A little juice bar. Across the way, this is our art gallery. What's up? I actually got some pretty rare stuff in here. Blue axolotl from when we got the blue axel. Uh, Dragon's breath. Can't get that no more. That's rare. Run by Rubik's. Sap Rubik's. Uh, then we got all the ores in the game. I think all the flowers. That's a map of our turtle that I showed you guys earlier. A large fern. Large grass. That's Rose's tear. Uh, then we got the nutcracker and all that jazz. So that's pretty cool. Over here, we've got a. Uh, police officer, the police, this is bees with the K9 unit, Kona. Uh, we got a little bit of a food truck over here run by jugs. If you want to get yourself a snack over here, we got a fire truck with some firefighters, which are blazes. And then of course we've got Abby over here. She's really into firefighters. You know, look at her. All right. This is supposed to be Alm Industries. So. That's what that symbol is. It's some sort of electrical thing. I'll show you guys on the rooftops here because I got like helicopters and ja all that jazz. But this is Alm. This is Alm Industries. We have ourselves one of these. Bam. Redstone door. Yeah, took me no time at all to whip this thing together. I also have an elevator. But if I click this button, it will take us all the way up to the top. But I ain't got all day. So I'm just going to fly it because it literally takes all day. Where we can go uh, down here, we can go say hello to Om. Sup, Om. And he's got like a little bit of a view of the entire city, you know. Sup. A lot of channel points here. All right, we got some other like really cool like redstone stuff in here that we've learned throughout the way uh throughout throughout our time, right? We got the Etho Hopper clock. This is something that I learned. I'm trying to get better at redstone, you know how it is. Uh we got the Impulse SV item sorter. That's this deal with like our add-on light edition. I got a tutorial coming out for like that whole deal. We got this really cool like 1 second clock. Hello? But yeah, as we learn more and more redstone, we kind of add some redstone in here. So little things that I can do off the top of my head and memorize. I would like to turn this into like a redstone museum. It's not filling up very fast, but that's not because I suck at redstone. 
that's mainly just because I don't have all the time in the world to build up all the crazy redstone knowledge I have in there. You know what I mean? Um, all right. So let's work our way over to here. This is a Christmas train. My very first train. So this Christmas train, if you guys remember where the mob boss was, the very first build that I showed you guys with the uh, the dark factory train, like kind of like the uh, the dark train. This is the Christmas train. This is run by Ro and Fantasia. We finally put a wheel into this. If you guys are coming in from our last world tour, I did it. Took me about a year and a half. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we're hauling in presents. Big presents. Snowman. Hello. With like the other snowman guys up in here. Like I said, that's I Phelps. Uh, Christmas trees. Uh, more presents. Little gingerbread houses. To go to my little, my other uh, gingerbread house in my world, if you guys remember where that's at. And then coal for all the baddies out there, you know? So this thing, we got like little flashing lights to tell people to slow the heck down. Me trying to get better at trees. You want to buy yourself a U-log? You can do that. A little bit of a reef here. That's um, that's a that's Rudolph with Santa's sleigh, but there's not Santa up there, so I don't know who's riding that. This is the um train station with some shenanigans going on here. We got Super Zopa and his um super polka dot bikini or whatever it is with Bunny up there and Pumat's dropping an anvil on um systematically. But this is like a little bit of a train station down here. Paperboy Stan. Want to buy, uh, you know, read a newspaper. Snowball fight. The hot cocoa stand that doesn't actually sell hot cocoa. Run by Samantha Enterprise. Sam and Amanda. Where we got, uh, you know, Mandolin and Brixie and all that kind of stuff. We got Kronos over there little like area to drink some hot chocolate if you're lucky enough to get snag one that's a gold farm i'll show you guys that later nothing really special to look at on this side uh take some photos all right my first plane flown by uh zopa we got snoopy and stuff look at i'm hanging out Helicopter. This was so much fun. I don't know if that should be like that. I think that's because of my daylight sensor. Oh, yeah, we got a little helicopter here. Yay! Let me jump across here like meta. This is like our like uh rooftop pool area. Whoa! And then we got a rooftop garden up here too where people can like kind of like you know read books stretch your legs all that jazz all right let's go back into the masa area and i can show you guys uh hobbit oh no halfling hills which is like kind of like the hobbit shire from uh lord of the rings if you guys are a fan <laughs> But yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, we got the sleigh over here with essentially she over here stealing presents and throwing them off the sleigh. Rude. Alright, so let's go over here to the Masa area. And I can show you guys Halfling Hills with Harvest Hollows. And then we gotta go hit up uh, the Panda Sanctuary. The drown farm. We got a lot. Of, we got so much more stuff to show you guys. Like I said, we all we do is build. So, back to the masa with the build dojo. That's Barry. He's from the. He's from the B movie. He hangs out. This is where I was trying to get better at mushrooms. This thing's from uh, Better Minecraft. Thing's cute. These are Eye Phelps again. Awesome little like thingies. Uh, this leads me over to my gold farm, so I'll show you guys that here in a bit. Uh, it's supposed to be like kind of like a soul sand valley. 
leads into like that mountain and ja all that jazz. So let's head on over to Harvest Hollows, where we got ourselves a little bit of a sign that was made by a viewer. Right there. Cool little sign. Thought it was nice. So we added it up. Come over here. This is Harvest Hollows. It's it's going to get expanded over time. This one's more like an autumn-themed village. And all that stuff. We got the bandwagon. We got houses. More mushrooms. Little, little areas. We got a pumpkin. Uh, a little pumpkin pie cart. Little windmills. I was messing around with like some uh, mainly mushrooms, dude. Mainly messing around with a lot of mushrooms. A fox family. Some of my founders on the channel made them a little, uh, little house. Oh, this looks like a dilapidated truck. Completely dilapidated. I love this thing. Little area back here. And then we've got this like little like spot underneath here. But. Harvest Hollows is going to expand all the way up here as well. We're going to have multiple layers to Harvest Hollows. Over here is probably going to be Snowy Islands. That's going to transition over to the snowy areas of my world. Where you saw my Fox Sanctuary, the big floating island over there. So that'll be like a perfect transition. You can see that we were messing around with some snow. Just to see if it melted or not. So let's start up here and I can show you guys Halfling Hills. Don't look at that. Totally didn't get blown up by a creeper and didn't uh, fix it. Um, This is Obsidian. This is my horse. What's up? All right, down here. I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, Link, do you do interiors? Well, Chazzy, I'll tell you what. I do do interiors. Let me show you guys. Every single one of these houses is done. Uh, We got this old guy here. He's supposed to be that old guy from... um. It's, it's Cub Fan, but he's supposed to be that older guy from um, Lord of the Rings. That I can't think of the name of. Anyways, this is uh, Melly's house. Nobody's wearing shoes. Everybody's got them dogs out. Hanging out here. Mm -hmm. Gandalf. Yeah, that's the guy. Gandalf. I built this. Uh, I built this frog over here from when frogs first came to the game. Thought that was really cute. Forgot who built that. Um, okay. Homie's hanging out here. He's farming potatoes. We got like little um, statues and stuff like that. We got Lumen over here. He owns a house. It's really cool to do like all the in, like little interiors and stuff. It's got like a little art studio. Mm -hmm. Oh, little wagons. These things were heckin' cute. Little wagons. It's supposed to be like Gandalf's like wagon that he rolls in on. You know, where he like sits here in the very beginning of the movie with his white horse. Mm -hmm. Little benches and stuff. We got Freya. Who's supposed to be the um uh one of the like she's supposed to be finding the ring, basically. Like by the uh, the water, and this was built by nobody builds. Thought it was a cute little boat. Oh, we got an ice cave. I'll show you guys that. It makes no sense. Uh, we got Mono. Yeah, he, uh, he fits right into this environment. He's probably a little bit shorter than a Hobbit, but he hangs out here with all of his friends, having a little like sugar party. Little kitchen and stuff. He hangs that up there. Pretty cool. He stands up like way up there because he's just a little bit, little bit shorter, so he can't stand down low. Um. Anyways, tornado. It's fine. Little flip goblin. You'll see him around the world, just kind of doing flip stuff. Uh, another little wheelbarrow. This is the smallest well I could possibly make. Couldn't get any smaller. That's a small house. Uh, we got Robka's house. It's a funny little house. Look at these little, like, coat racks. He's got, like, little wardrobe stuff. We got Bunny and Amanda. 
having a few too many hot chocolates at night, getting stuck inside the aquarium, thinking she's some sort of fish. Got Rob over here. He's hanging out uh, with Sin. You know, little grandfather, grandfather, grandfather clocks, little like area. I love this little area. This is cute. You know what I mean? You're supposed to like sleep up here. You know? Love this. Uh, we got Minnie over here. She's reading books and stuff. Love these builds were a lot of fun. Like lots of fun. <laughs> uh, we got uh, Dame. He's a little bit taller than Mono. He hangs out over here. I hang out over here too. Vibing. Little bed. Just me trying to get better at interiors. Trying to make like little rustic houses and stuff with that. But that is the Shire. I'm going to show you guys the Great Lake project because, oh my gosh, it's quite a bit. Over here, this is my my uh, my ice cave where I have two polar bears named Pepsi and Cola. They're in there, I promise. One's back there. Don't know where the other guy's at. But yeah, we got Pepsi and Cola. There they are. Okay, you'll notice there's a little bit of a gap here, but that's because this is a work in progress. Over here, I eventually want to build a Viking Bay with like a giant waterfall area that comes across here, and I need to have a light there. I don't know what happened there. That's super dark. But I made this entire lake. Thought this was really cool. We have a bunch of dolphins in here from the How Did We Get Here advancement, which reminds me, check it out. Literally got every single advancement in the game now. We've got the how did we get here? We've got the furious cocktail. Um, and then today we got ourselves probably the scariest one of all, the caves and cliffs one. That was terrifying. But we got every advancement now. So these are all the dolphins everybody told me would die during my advancement uh, that are still thriving. So they're vibing. But yeah, this is all part of the masa. This is going to be a natural divide between the Skull Clans and the Masa area. And this will be a little bit of the transition area. I built this on one of the Halloweens. They all kind of blend together now. Uh, but this is a um, supposed to be a graveyard. With one of these builds. I forget what this thing is called. Like a crypt or something like that. We've got the Grave Digger over there. That's, uh, that's Dave, the Grave Digger. No, that's Dave. Or is that Dave? One of these guys' name is Dave. <laughs> but yeah, I let uh, I basically let uh, Twitch chat pretty much name all these things. And we got that guy. So that's cool. I'm gonna build a bridge here uh, eventually. That will bring me to my next demolition project, which is this little thing right here. This uh, this monstrosity, this eyesore, this... Um, everybody's got that ugly thing. This is my ugly thing um, behind uh, the gamer. This is supposed to be a... Uh, this is my, uh, my skelly and zombie farm in here. This is where I used to get all my bones and all my arrows early game. I used to just kind of sit down here and kill, like, skeletons and stuff like that. Look at my clock and be like, oh my gosh, I gotta sleep. A little trash can that I always feared. So, yeah. That's that. All right, let's head over towards the Panda Sanctuary, the tree farm, and my trident farm. So we'll make our way over there. We'll see what happens. So we we'll make our way through here, but a lot of a lot of the builds that you see around here, these were all built pretty pretty early on, and I'm not even showing you guys fully in detail like what has been built around here. Like I am skipping quite a bit just to kind of make like the video manageable since we're almost three hours into this, but. We've got our sheep farm, which is supposed to be like a rainbow with like clouds. 
and all this kind of stuff. And we got Jeb. He helps run this place. This is where I get all my wool from. Um, and then even when I was like in my super early period of playing in this world, uh, this was one of my very first Masa expansions was down here when I was trying to learn how to build better mushrooms and horrific trees and stuff like that. Um, and people were kind of hanging out and stuff like that. You know, we got a bird who's, um, well, we got a little bit of a horse stable. We have, uh, I think this guy's name is Pig Champ. And I think this guy's is Isaac Pigton or something like that. What's this guy's name again? Oh, Pig Newton. <laughs> that guy's funny. Yeah, I got like little waterfalls here. Just trying to get better. So yeah, just know that there's a lot of this that I'm actually kind of skipping over. Just for the sake of time. Alright. Come over here. Oh, we got like a little like uh, tent area. That was a fun like little build. Don't look at the back of that tree. Oh, I did tell you guys I was going to show you this earlier. This is basically where I used to make my potion back in the day by hand. Um, with like a small like little nether wart farm and stuff of like that. Another case of me flexing how much, um, crying obsidian I had basically. So there's that. Under heavy development, I plan to like revamp my entire base. Back here will be completely revamped as well. I'm far from that. You'll see that there's like a there's a lot of moving parts here. So over to our where am I? Where am I? Okay, so down here. Once we are able to see this is the tree farm tunnel. That I really hope never gets lit up by a gas, otherwise this whole thing's going down. Um, so this leads me up to my tree farm, my panda sanctuary, my trident farm, um, and drown town and stuff like that. So it's a completely different area of my world. Probably one of my favorite tunnels. Absolutely gorgeous. We'll go. We'll get into that in a minute, but. Let's get into the panda sanctuary. Bam. All right, welcome to the panda sanctuary where we got butterflies and all that jazz. This was focused primarily on uh, the brown panda. We built this one for Luke the Duke, who is an amazing member of the community. Chilling here with his little brother. Uh, this is probably one of the most influential moments of my Twitch channel, honestly. Um, not only, there was so many things that happened during this build that I'll never forget. We got the honeycomb heart. We got, um, Beez's, um, potion shop. For whenever we're going to, like, a deep dark area, we can have splash potions. Whatever, uh, may happen. Oops. We got these little ladybugs. We call this place the uh, the Knowledge Tree. This is run by Choir. Thought this was really cool. It's like a tree inside of a uh, a library. I think this is Daphnis. I might not. I might be mistaken. Mm -hmm. Just members of the community and stuff like that. If I'm, I'm if I'm like spewing random names at you guys, it's you know like Yoshimi over here. All right. So there's quite a bit to watch, quite a bit of things to look into, but the main focal point is this lab over here run by Amanda. This is how we got the brown panda. Look at this like little blushy panda guy. Pretty cute. So in here, we have our brown pandas. That wasn't even that hard to get, honestly. Uh, if you know anything about like, um, I don't even know science but it's supposed to be a, uh, like a thing they're all kind of stuck in here from honey and stuff we got Amanda who has her pickle juice and her stash of pickles back here you know anything about Amanda she loves pickles and then she's got her um, 
her assistant over here. And then we're over here, we're studying different pandas inside the lab. Like little computers and uh, all that jazz. Coming out here. We have a area up in here. This is the best I could do for a uh, a, mush a mushroom banner. We got a shop in here. Ran by Pips. Kind of supposed to be a gift shop. Little catering area that was supposed to be ran by Jugs, but I never put them in here. Got some salmons. Uh, we got a just in case for whatever reason you think that uh, cardboard goes inside of the oven because uh, who would ever do that? A little bit of a cautionary tale. Down here, we got our yin and yang. We got our shop for Sin, whose neck must be incredibly sore because she has never looked up from this book. Always check an inventory. This was my very first pumpkin and melon farm in here. And this was one of my very first... Um, Bamboo farms. Right there. This is one of my first, first gradients in this world, too. We got Outlet. He runs the candle shop. You can see him lighting us up some candles and uh, all that jazz. Got some candles on the floor, you know? Beacons and candles and all that jazz. I think this is Grayson. A bunch of flowers. We got Cola Waver. This is when I didn't have the blue axolotl yet, so I just built my own. And then I got my own eventually. It's supposed to be like a fish shop. All around here. So we have fresh water, salt water, and then a coral reef over there. Coming through here. Got a music shop built for Hayman. This is supposed to be the other side disc. We have a drum set. Um... Birds, note blocks going all the way, or note thingies going all the way around here. A piano with a chair. Oh, we got Caterpie. Love and love Caterpie. Have to have Caterpie, right? All right, so let's go over here. Oracle girl next door. Built this one up for Bunny. She's also very short. Uh, with another butterfly. This is um that that person that I forget the name of. But anyway, she's got the uh that's Karomi. There it is. Uh that's Bunny. Oracle girl next door. We're with like the really cool souls coming out of the uh the portal. And like these little death pits right here. One day those will probably blow up on me and I'll probably regret this, but hey. I'm telling you, I think the way I'm going to lose my world is by my own design. <laughs> we got the bees breeze. It's all about bees. One of my moderators, she farted once during the stream. We never let it go. So she bottles it up. This guy's also, you know, farting. Uh, I got a bunch of casual uh, birds out here and stuff. Come over here. So I can get into like a little bit of like why this place was so influential, but it's uh this was a massive I was actually thinking about this the other day. This this was a massive part of my channel. Like so many great memories. I literally couldn't even put it into perspective. We got Yash. Little slime area. We got a monarch butterfly. The man up there. We got whatever the heck butterfly that is. Got that off of, um... Pinterest or something. We got these. These are these are supposed to be, um... Uh, what should we call these guys? These are supposed to be fireflies, dude. Alright. We got Rusty. This is our axolotl pond. I moved. I just had to move a bunch of axolotls throughout my world because I had so many. So that's Rusty. She's our marine biologist in this world. 
We got the Jimmy Neutron looking ice cream cone over here. If you guys have ever watched Jimmy Neutron, you know this is his hair. I'll never build an ice cream shop like this again. Anyways, this was built for Ryzen. We got this guy who's stuck inside the cooler. But if you want some ice cream, you can come here. <laughs> down... Oh, nope. Not down there. Got bamboozled. Down here, I've got one of the scariest shops in this world. This this shop first came out when the Deep Dark first came into the game. Yeah. This is the scariest shop out here. The head collecting shop. Let's have like the uh, symbolic floor and stuff like that. Run by Captain Owl. Ooh, it's supposed to be like the Deep Dark. <laughs> Coming up here. We got this area right here. This is supposed to be a auction house for rare mobs. So we got our birds. We got our snow fox. Skelly horse. We got uh, heart attack who runs it with crimson. Ocelot. We got Jimbo. Come down here. This is supposed to be like a grayscale jelly. Jelly can. Uh, we've got a, a creeper running away with speed potion because, you know, creepers are scared of cats. Thought that was funny. It's a cat cafe. Hello? We got like cat thingies all over the place. String run by butter. Little cat cafe action. You know, little toys and stuff. Yeah, it's a good time. It's supposed to be like scratching posts and like little like things that cats can play with. Little litter box that this guy has never gotten off of. Mm -hmm. Cute shop. Alright. I think that is it when it comes to uh, the panda sanctuary. Oh my gosh, that guy just almost got yeeted. Do you see that? But look at this area. This is the reason why we needed to build out here. Absolutely gorgeous mountainscape. Speaking about mountainscapes, one of my future ascensions is going to go on this, uh, this uh, super high up mountain over here. But this is also a really cool area. Okay, so down here, this is where my tree farm is. We hand chop all of our wood. Was this actually where I wanted to kind of like learn how to build better roofs and stuff of like that? So I built all kinds of roofs over here. Try to push myself, but this is the tree farm. We do a bit of chopping. I don't have like a, one of those fancy like tree choppers or anything like that. Um literally have where is it at over 123,000 spruce logs hand chopped in this world so yeah on our way to a million but yeah we got a nice little crane here one of those water thingies mm -hmm come through here this is where this is like a tree chopping area i wanted like a super flat area to basically chop trees i was inspired by um uh one of hermitcraft's uh seasons where they were doing like a bunch of just just it was like cub fan it was like um it was cub fam and scar who was running some sort of industry where they were chopping logs and stuff like that i think it's like vex corp or something but yeah this is where we chop all of our logs there's nothing in here. This whole thing was probably a bit ambitious. This is an auto sorter. There's no way we're going to have like four double chests of just oak log chilling here. So way too ambitious. Over here, I got a bunch of torch spam. Oakle bean farm. Got this thing. Or like these things. 
Never even tried to light up area back here, huh? Just left it. Okay, so over here we have the great bunny uh, explosion. Dude. I used to have like a bunch of rabbits up in here. So that was a creeper. Imagine that zombie was a creeper. Fell from over there and blew up all of this. And then hundreds of rabbits ran out. Maybe not hundreds, but a lot of rabbits. So you'll see rabbits everywhere around here now. Um, because of that. Because I was going to breed up all my rabbits in there. Now, I just got rabbits just stuck everywhere. All right, we got like little carts and stuff. Different kind of roofs. This cart is ran... Uh, this cart is pulled by rabbits. <laughs> Wishing well. With a rabbit. More roofs. My lumber um, facility. Where I process all my lumber. You know, we got drying racks. Got this guy. Mm -hmm. More rabbits. Just everywhere. Like, kind of like an infestation at this point. This is obviously all terraformed. But I built this entire area up for Kipsnip. The god of trees. Right there. Hangs out on his swing. Underneath his tree. Um, we even tried to do like some really creative stuff. So you'll see we even got beavers in the water. Fish. I thought the beavers were pretty dang cool. Coming around here. We got like the little beaver dam. So like another like little beaver hanging out over there. I thought this was a pretty big like lake at the time when I was building it all up. But now in hindsight, like looking back, it's definitely a lot smaller. But you'll see like the panda sanctuary over there in the distance and stuff. But yeah, there's a lot to kind of take in here. Basically, this was all here just for me to get better at terraforming. Did a little bit of a tree line going all the way around here. A little bit of um, whatever the heck that is. Cave. But I plan to expand this area out that way and up there quite a bit. So there's actually quite a bit that needs to happen there. We also got a little chicken coop back here. Sup? I'm going to take those eggs. Might need them later. All right. Take you guys over to uh, our Trident Farm and then our Drown Town area. Because there's actually quite a bit to see over there. Um, this is probably one of my favorite tunnels. I love this tunnel. I love the colors of this tunnel. Like all the moss, the pris the prism really works here too. Here we go this way. This brings us out to our trident farm. Uh oh. I haven't been here in a long time. I hope it's not a disaster. Oh, we're not bad. We're not bad. Okay, it's a little bit of a disaster. Um, it's a big disaster. Anyways, it does. It definitely definitely doesn't look like this. I think this is a redstonia design. Where we get just a stupid amount of drowned. Look at the size of this thing. Just a stupid amount of drowned. I think it gives me about 20 tridents an hour. But I'm not 100% sure about that. It could be more. It could be a lot less, but it's pretty dang fast. All right, don't look at the outside of this thing either. It's not supposed to be looked at from out here. Man, let, let me get out of here before I start getting, you know, um, overrun by flipping zombies because I was trying to get a... trying to get one of these guys. <laughs> With a pumpkin. Like a glowing pumpkin on his head. 
All right, so over here is the main build for the Trident area. Built up a, what we call a drown town. Love it. Kind of inspired by Zelda. Coming all the way through here. You can see that 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 ugly thing over there. <laughs> anyway, it's got a little bit of a bridge. I love this palette, like I said. These tridents were a massive pain in the neck to build. <laughs> but this was like probably one of my uh one of the funnest things I ever got to build. This is also where we keep our blue axolotls to breed up. We got our manatee over here. You'll see why. All of our glow squid and these uh, tanks. Tropical fish. Guardians. Speaking of, I also have two elder guardians over here. That we done yoinked. Built this one up for healer. So, yeah, we got two Elder Guardians over here. Got a bunch of axolotls. We have turtles. We come down here. We have a little bit of a doorway. This is our very first underwater build. This was, um, this was something. I'll give it a second for our eyes to adjust. This was a massive learning curve. I basically learned what you can and cannot like waterlog in the game. I also built the fog effect down here. And if you look very closely, you'll notice that there's like um, axolotls down there. Just wanted to give like the um, the illusion that there was like deep sea like fish. We have our trident here in the middle. So all these guys are like named. I got Swim Shady. And a bunch of like aquatic stuff. I got all kinds of shadies throughout our world. It'd be cool to expand this area too. It looks even better with shaders. Check this out. Wow. Everything just glows. The water and the fog effect looks absolutely stunning. So yeah, this was like the first time we ever built underwater. Little uh, little drought. That's a dead fish. That's still swimming. He's hanging on for dear life. Um, yeah. There's that. Also, the reason why we have the, the manatee and stuff is so I can drink uh, a bucket of milk on my way out. I'm super slow. Wow. Eh. Lagging. All right, we got a couple other little areas to show you guys. I got Slimeville I need to show you guys. Slimeville. Humble beginnings. Slimeville was super humble beginnings. Do you want to see what I was like? How of a, how bad of a builder I was three years ago? Well, you're about to find out. Uh, and then I can show you guys the gold farms and all that stuff. And we can start going through a little bit of the Hall of Fame to finish everything off because there's a lot. There's a lot more to see. But yikes. Um. A lot of people have farms and a lot of people have like super flats, but I don't have a super flat. So a lot of the, uh, the a lot of the time I kind of just build. So Slimeville's over here and I don't, I feel like I go to explain myself, but you know, it's a pretty bad building, very basic building, but hopefully it will motivate one of you guys. That not everybody just comes out the gate a good builder. So, over here. I have Slimeville. I also have the area that I collect all of my sand. 
I will terraform this over time. That's why I don't care. There's just a lot of sand over here that I've been mining over there throughout the years. Oh, this is where it all started, though. This is Slimeville. Sup? Got the Slime King. I built this one for Colonel. Bam. So we have a little bit of a llama area in here. That's where I keep all my llamas. Kind of crazy looking. I also don't have beacon effects here. Because I was definitely down bad for beacons. We got a map. We got a whole crafting house. I built this thing out of smokers. I Dude, I thought like I was so slick building this out of smokers. But it's supposed to be a... Um, like a forge. But this whole area is actually built um, over a slime chunk, which we call this factory over here, the slime crime factory. This is where all my slime gets. Dude, I don't know why I did such a steep staircase down in here. Anyway, this is where I get all my slime balls from. I'll like never run out of slime. There's a slime farm back there. This is the steepest staircase in Minecraft. One of. I don't know where I was going, but I was going places back then. Mm -hmm. Little purper ice cream truck. His, uh, his ice cream machine's broken. That's for Bill. Right here, this is the... Pyramid I built for Colonel. Over here on his uh, little, um, you know, deathbed with its riches. Back then, this amount of gold was rich. Very. This is also where we have our very first Slime Shaney. He's amazing. And then I don't, for I don't remember what we named this guy. Oh, Chunky Boy. Mm -hmm. All right. We have the mayor of this town. Her name is Bunny. Bunny, mayor next door. She runs this place, so she kind of hangs out in here. Oh, hello. Like this. Got the rabbit. Got this wacky looking bee. With a, essentially a bird. And then we got this, uh, this calico cat or Jimmy. Nothing's up here yet. But I was I was being um, harassed by Twitch chat about honey vaders. Like, oh my god, you should build a honey vader. They're the coolest thing ever. I don't think they're that cool. I think they're too slow. Uh, we got the slime kind, uh, slime crime factory. So we chop up all of our slime, put them inside boxes, and ship them out. This is how we make monies around here. Anyways, so like a little bit of like you know, this is our boy. Uh, Frank? I think his name's Frank. He's a hard worker. This is the slime uh, farm over here. Then we got a little bit of people over here beefing. Llama spitting. It's all, it's a workplace accident prone area. So, you know. That's cool. I think his name is Frank because he, like, his house is over here. This is where Frank lives. But this is the slime farm. Oh, I thought this was the coolest thing, too. Look at this thing. This is just armor stands inside of sand. Thought I was slick with it, you know what I mean? Saw that. Um, This is an actual slime farm down there. And we have, like, a little, like, you know, mine cart that kind of goes through there. Kind of give it a little bit of life. But... All the houses that you see around here is just me messing around with different pallets, trying to figure out how to build and stuff. This house turned out uh, pretty good. I like this house. This house was very purple. Basically, Twitch would give me a block that I had to build with. Got ourselves our very first lighthouse. This is supposed to be like a club with a little bit of redstone ingenuity. Check this out. Um... How do I get in here again? All right, wrong bucket. Bam! It's a, sh it's a sushi bar.
Pretty neat. A little bit of redstone magic. We got um, Pablo hanging out. He's our DJ. We got a hot. That's my first hot air balloon ever. Hot, hot. Uh, th this is like a hot tub on the top of this roof that you can't get to through any staircases, like DJs and stuff. Other room. More DJs. Let me see if I can remember the name of this person who lives in this lighthouse. Um, there's a girl who lives in this lighthouse that I can't remember the name of. But she lives in here. She lives all the way up here. And this is like in her little like room and stuff. I'm sure somebody inside the comments will know. Like who whose house this is. But I cannot remember. I'm out of rockets. But yeah, these are very, very basic builds. This is basically where I started. Messing around with different pallets. When I like when I tell people like you gotta practice building, um, this is where this is where I practice building. Kind of like a little bee area, like a little outdoor market. All that stuff. And then we've got this area. Super inconspicuous. I'll show you guys the entrance to this place once. This is the this is the black market. Or if you want to buy some crazy uh doodads, you could do it down in here. Run by shadow. Buy some seagrass. Some uh some you know spooky stuff. You can do that all down here. Football crazy's house. The fact that I don't have beacons out here is actually kind of crazy. But look look at how basic these houses are. I don't know. This is like kind of like a where I came from and where I'm at kind of builds because there's no detail in any of these. Luke to Duke. But I did do interiors. Every one of these houses has, uh, has an interior. Believe it or not. Every single one of these houses has an interior. We won't go through every single one, but they all do have interiors. Just trying to practice, like, getting uh, all the interiors and stuff like that done. This one's for music. Oh, that's like the original Toast Rabbit. But yeah. Very nostalgic. I'll show you guys our very first Christmas we ever had on the uh, on here, and it's way over there. One of our very first Christmases. This is uh this is where our marine biologist Rusty's at. First time I ever used kelp. Supposed to be the sheriff's office. With uh, like the sheriff star. Totally fake uh, armor stance that somebody broke out. Looking for a zombie. For a hundred thousand gapples. So if you've seen them, let us know. That actually used to be my portal to Slimeville way back in the day. This is actually where I used to get um, all my mushrooms. All right. So, can't remember if this was our. I think this. I think this was our very first Hall. No, not Halloween. Christmas ever. So we built the Grinch's house. For a big supporter of the channel, his name was Herds. But this isn't supposed to be uh, the Grinch's house on this really weird-looking uh, mountain. And he just like kind of like up here, looking over at Slimeville, being all jelly and stuff, you know. Also comes with an interior. We got Max. 
all the presents he done stole. So there's that. This is a really fun build. I don't know, if you're looking at this, like, it looks like it should be the Grinch's house. So we took an opportunity. This is where I got the advancement of how to, like, traveling on a Strider for, like, 100 blocks or something like that. Kind of like a weird area. I almost thought for a minute that that said something. Not to forget that. But that's Slimeville. Now I can show you guys the Hall of Fames. If I haven't forgotten anything. So... There's a pretty good possibility that I may have forgotten something. Oh, iron, let me show you guys the gold farms first. So we have two gold farms. I think both of them were built for... Um, Nimbom. No, both of them are Ill Mango. Aha. Uh -huh. So they're, I think they're, uh, one of them's an Ill Mango one, one of them's a Shulker Craft. So you remember how I had that, um, that iron farm area that went all the way down here? Well, this actually used to be my very first tunnel. We call this the Iron Tunnel. And it led all the way to that iron uh, that iron farm area that I was showing you guys earlier. That really small room that we outgrew. This is all above my hub. This is on the roof. This is the gold farm. That's where that portal was inside the city. This is where all the, uh, the guys go here. There's so much gold here. That would be a shame if it went missing. As we revamp this place, who knows what will happen. That's where the other one is. I'll show you guys out here in a bit. We have a bartering farm up here. It's above my gold farm. Thought we were slick with it. Built this one for Aptrix. Hello. Where we have all of our guys up in here of our piglins where we pretty much just throw a bunch of gold in there logical geek boy design if i'm not mistaken and uh get a bunch of um bunch of cool stuff oh yeah and we got this chicken and by chicken i mean uh what the heck pig so this is the gold farm it does me no good because I don't AFK. So it's completely useless. We have a frog life farm. Uh, honestly, half the time the frogs are dead. So that's that's honestly kind of useless. Got to build a new one of those. I don't even know who this guy is. Oh, it's a brown panda. Very first bee farm. This is where I move all my wardens. So I should have a warden up here. I think. Oh, maybe I don't. Maybe I do, but maybe I just don't know where he's located. I don't know. There's a not there's a chance we might have a rogue warden on the roof. I don't remember. Who knows? Sure we'll sure he'll turn up. Does this have eggs in it? Oh. That's a, uh, that's a hogland farm. Pork chops and leather. And this is the other gold farm that I was talking about. The donut farm. This is El Mango. Pretty cool. Like I said, I don't really use gold, though. Like, it's really hard to get a lot of gold in this world because I don't AFK, so... I need to make something probably crazier down the road when it comes to gold farms because... It's just... I just can't get enough gold. So that will probably be Dash Puma. I think his name is. I think he makes an insane gold farm. Like, absolutely insane. 
think it's the fastest gold farm you could possibly find. Okay. Or actually, hold on. Check it out. This is the uh, this is the hub where we're constantly under attack. I'll show you guys uh, the Hall of Fames. Because there's quite a bit to them. But yeah, the whole hub is built in the actual nether. I felt like there was no excuse to not be inside the nether. When it, come, uh, when it came down to it. I felt like we kind of had to. I'll try not to spend too much time inside the Hall of Fames. But I'll try to show you guys... Just how cool the Hall of Fames are. And they're available for everybody. As long as you're like watching the channel, you can gain channel points over time. But there's some very cool plots. This is our OG Hall of Fame. You'll see like a lot of people have some really cool like builds and stuff like that going on in here. All kinds of neat things. Then we have our Harry Potter. So it's supposed to be Slytherin. It's green. Uh, Gryffindor. Uh, the blue one, which is Ravenclaw. And then we have Hufflepuff. Yellow. So very cool. We can go this way. This is our Zelda Hall of Fame. They're all kind of like planned accordingly. Dude, people can buy notch apples. There's been some, there's been a lot of notch apples sold. Absolutely insane. I'm talking millions of channel points. Millions. You can upgrade all the way up to uh, netherite armor as well. And even get a trim. You can like design however you want to have your plots. This is a, uh, we call it the bone zone, but it's kind of like, um, uh, what's that thing called where you like kind of like dust up bones and stuff? But yeah, you can get like cool trims and stuff. Archaeology. Kind of like an archaeology area. But it's like a cool way for people to uh, basically showcase their personalities through um, their Hall of Fame plots. There's some really cool stuff. I'm just collecting all the eggs too. You know, if you're really into, like, um, Disney, or if you're really into, like, yeah, pretty much Disney. There's a lot of Disney on this plot. That's Mercs. All right. And this way, we got the... This is probably one of the hardest ones, Star Wars. So I try to do Sith on one side, and, um, um, Jedi on the other. So this is Sin. She's got a lot of cool stuff on here. She got she got the only witch up in here. Mm -hmm. More armor, uh, netherite trim, lots of netherite trim, some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. They got Yoda right here, old Yoda. I'm like tanking my frames right now, which is a little bit scary. We got ham, bees. She's got like the dark side and the light side going on over here. Very neat. People can buy like really rare items like Dragon's Breath, which is really neat. And then, like I said, all everybody who's got like those really cool custom heads and stuff like that, you can wear those. Girl Geisha, all kinds of Pokemon and stuff. This is supposed to be Cyberpunk. Really cool. Dragon's got a sweet looking plot. Sweet looking head too. We got Captain Fuzz. Captain Fuzz is pretty good, pretty cool. Lots of chickens in here. Lots of chickens. We got Carissa. Lots of uh, used to be chickens in here as well. So, a little bit of a cyberpunk spot. <laughs> Yo, look at the look at this guy's shield. The pig shield. Thought that was really cool. Alright, over here. 
Bunny's got a pretty cool plot. Uh, a lot to take in there. Ooh. This is Alice in Wonderland. I'm just going to walk on the table here. It's supposed to be like a long tea table. Mm -hmm. Code Star's got a lot of really cool stuff as well. Some really, really expensive plots here. They're like a lot of huge supporters of the channel. Which is uh, absolutely um, like amazing. Blows me away. More netherite. Alright, this is like kind of inspired by Luigi's Haunted Mansion. Got some very cool plots. Like, check these guys out. We got Sam. We got Systematically. Just collecting all the Poké Spheres. Um, we got One Piece. Shilly Monster. Very thick looking plot. This was supposed to be like a horror plot. I thought that was really cool. Some really neat ideas happening around here. We got Mini. <laughs> some very cool ideas. Barack, I'm sure you've seen him everywhere in the world. Almost. We have a uh, Hunter. It's upside down. Everything's upside down. Uh, we got an invisible spider over here for the King of Freaks. That's DJ. This was supposed to be space. This was really cool. Uh, TMG uh, basically designed this guy. Look at this. The cool like things you can do with like the uh, the item frames and stuff. Really cool plot. <laughs> Almost thought that dog was wearing a hat. Warden head, which is really flipping cool. We got Luke out here. Representing. I'm just getting all the eggs today. Look at this is where all my chickens went. So many chickens. I right, got cool like floating ghosts and stuff. This guy's a Pokemon. Uh, Dust Skull? I think his name is. Mm, Alright, over here. We're not even close to being done all the, the flipping Hall of Fames. This was one of my... I think this was also my very first Christmas. This is the Ocean Monument. That we did on Christmas. Really cool. Lots of netherite, of course. What? Not Ocean Monument. We did this on Christmas at the Ocean Monument. What I'm pretty much saying. Don't listen to what I just said. Supposed to be like candy cane pillars and stuff. Santa comes down this uh this thingy here. Ocean. Ocean was really cool. I love Ocean. Ocean's like a really aesthetically pleasing plot. I, don't know, I love the palettes here. This was probably one of the hardest ones I've ever had to do. Egyptian. We got Apox plot. Looking massive. But yeah, this one was tough because it was like, how do you even flip a notch apple? Be jab out here. Got even more netherite. This one was a lot of fun. This is the end. With like these really cool portals. Suggested uh, by Bill. I thought it was really cool. Uh, using the skulk to look like the actual like end portal. I thought that was a wicked idea. Uh, but yeah, we got like flea over here and stuff. Got all kinds of really cool plots. Like uh, this is another uh, One Piece plot. You can tell there's like a lot of One Piece um, fans out here. Mm -hmm. but yeah, the end gateways looked awesome. All these dragon heads, obviously, like they took a little while to get. There's quite a bit of netherite actually in here. This guy's just shocked to be here. We got Angry Beaver. So that's it for this side. We 
can show you guys over towards like the deep dark area and stuff. There's some really cool plots over there too. I don't, I don't even know how many Hall of Fames that was, but that was quite a bit. But if I go through this guy, yay! Bam, we got the nether. That's one soul sand away from breaking my world. Really cool. We got Broxy out here. Got a cool, uh, cool looking plot. Joberson's got a really cool plot. All gold theme and stuff. We got the super like one dimensional looking heads. We got Rand out here. He's got his uh, his his netherite as well. Rubik's is filling up quick. I don't even remember getting Cookie Monster, but I guess I did. More netherite. I don't know. Maybe one of you guys will be able to like count how much netherite you guys actually saw inside my Hall of Fame because I know it's pretty close to over 100 sets. We got Greek. Honey Bay's got a pretty cool looking plot. Kronos has got a really cool looking plot. Got a time. <laughs> I love this plot though. Like I thought this like this whole like Hall of Fame just turned out so great with like the blue and like the brick. The very first Pokemon head we ever got was the Magic Carp. People lost it. Got Betty out here. Looking slick. Fletcher out here. Also got all kinds of cool stuff. Another cool, like, like looking designs. Can't tell if I just saw J Stu twice. Definitely saw J Stu once. Oh, Little Stu and J Stu. Oh, weird. <laughs> All right, Rainforest. Rainforest was a lot of fun. I tried to make it look like Rainforest was raining. So if you pay like really, really close attention, you'll see like every now and again, you'll get raindrops. I don't know. Try to I tried to make it look like it was raining out here. It's supposed to be a, that's Paisley. That's supposed to be like um an Ewok. Some cool looking plots in here. We got Wicked in here and Wicked's like redoing his plot. Which is looking pretty, uh, pretty dang cool. I love this head. The uh, the warden woman. We got Donk down here. Check this out. This is supposed to be like a uh, like a camp campground area. This is uh, done for Wicked. He designed this, and I just built it for him. Uh, I think Inglory is trying to go for a. Um, forget what it's called, but it's like a pretty famous show. Game of Thrones vibe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scoville out here wearing the Beetlejuice head. Deep Dark, which is really cool. Love this place. So this is the, the whole Deep Dark Hall of Fame. So purple Squirrel out here and Ranger and Audio with his Goomba. You can see like the possibilities of using micro blocks in your world because they are amazing. Colonel mm, out here, like uh, sleeps a lot, hanging out. Control. We got Maddie Ice. Chaos over here. Uh, here. Hopefully, he's not allergic to pollen. With a uh, raccoon hanging out, showcasing some of their favorite Hermitcraft members and um, uh, Transformers and stuff. Really neat. Got the Pokemon starters. We've got some like really cool heads like this that only come around like once a year. So if you you'll probably see like these are very rare heads. The great Crimson guy. Oh, this was a um Geo that was in the middle of all this, so we just kept it here. That was really cool. All right, over here is actually where I plan to build my future Hall of Fames, which is going to be Dark Factory, Steampunk, and Middle Earth. 
all built up for the future. They're they're all gonna expand out that way. Where my frames are probably my best. Keep it away from everything so it's not so dense. Mm-hmm. So Dark Factory is like one of my favorite um, styles of building. Love Dark Factory. I love Steampunk as well. And with like the brand new blocks coming to the game, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. All right. And just when you thought we were done, nope, we got this side. <laughs> Tanya, there's like over 500 people up in here. Cave. Got the whole cave. Got a slime and a mine car. We got Sammy Sue hanging out. We got Kyle Waski with his penguins. TMG. That's his ascension. Just so many things going on in here. <laughs> All the gapples. Metal. We got Shelly. Mandolin. The one who got me addicted to microblocks right here. A lot of netherite inside this one, actually. I don't think I ever financially recovered. Probably why I'm like so low in netherite nowadays. Whoops. All right, down here. You're going to see a little bit of a byproduct of uh, micro blocks down here and how um, addictive they can really be. Once we get a little bit closer, you'll feel the gravitational pull of all the micro block heads. You know where it's coming from. Be one of those things that will basically jump out at you. Also, somebody in here also has a pretty heavy addiction to uh, to hay bales. I think that will uh, that will definitely speak to you guys too. It's a really cool like um, things done by Zen. <laughs> Just really neat. All the tridents from our trident farm. We got Duke. Out here with this cool looking helmet. I think that looks slick. The invisible armor stand done by um, Beagle. This is a product of being too addicted to microblocks. She's actually currently moving this into her villa on Frog Haven. That's Melly. She's the one I just built like that uh, that display for. They built a hay bale monster when micro blocks and hay bales collide because of Olivia has a uh, so many hay bales over here. I've had to I had to crank up my production of hay bales astronomically just to keep up with the two. Um, but yeah, a lot of pigs and stuff like that too. And you got like little mementos done by like JoJo. And then last but not least, we got Cherry Blossom. And yeah, like little, uh, little Yoshimi and people get to hang out in here. Showcase whatever they want to showcase throughout the world. All the way across. Just wanted to kind of build up some like really cool... Um, like cherry trees that kind of come across and stuff like that. So this is the newest one. Yes, this is the newest one. So everybody in here, like literally just got in here. So probably won't see any netherite in here unless I'm mistaken. Maybe there is somebody in here who's got netherite, but it's a little bit earlier on for, for anybody to have netherite. So, but there you have it. If you've ever wondered what 35,000 days in hardcore looks like, well, that's a three and a half hour long world tour of basically everything that I've got built in my world. Uh, we've had to cut out a few things along the way. Uh, just to make it so it wasn't like a four or five hour long tour. But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Obviously, the community is a very, very, very big part of the channel. If you guys ever want to become a part of that, you guys can come join us over on Twitch. We're, uh, we're a pretty cool, uh, chill group of individuals. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will see you guys in the next one. I'm going to make another world tour that's more of a cinematic. And we'll also go through all of our stats. Because eventually we're going to kick on over to one full year 
played in hardcore Minecraft, which would be absolutely insane. So I appreciate the support and I'll see you guys in the next one.